Hello and welcome guys. Make yourselves comfortable and enjoy. This is Necromancer of the Shadows. Chapter 526. Why? Shadow Walk. Evan used his Shadow Walk skill and suddenly appeared inside the barrier that was covering Amara. What the underscore Amara was shocked when she saw Evan suddenly appearing inside her barrier. Evan wanted to kill her in a single attack. But before he could attack her, one of the formations engraved on Amara's lab coat activated on its own. The A-rank horse she was holding instantly turned into dust, and a strong force erupted from her body, sending Evan flying backwards. Evan controlled his body in mid-air and landed 50 meters away from her. He was not injured because of his strong body, but he still felt annoyed that he missed such a good opportunity to end the fight in an instant. As expected, there are many formations engraved on that shitty coat Evan cursed inwardly, and once again charged towards Amara. Because of his high agility, he covered the distance of 50 meters very quickly, and arrived in front of her in an instant. His hands glowed with azure light as he punched her using the sonic resonance skill. While attacking, he was paying extra attention to Amara's lab coat, because of the formations that were engraved on it. Do you think I can only fight using the formations? Suddenly Evan heard Amara's voice and saw instead of backing away. She took a step forward and met his punch head on using her own punch. At first, Evan was surprised, but his surprise soon turned into shock when his fist met with Amara's punch and he felt the power behind it. Boom! A loud booming sound echoed throughout the lab room. Crack! With a sound of bone cracking, Evan was sent flying backwards like he was hit by a truck. Bang, he crashed against the wall of the lab room that was covered in silver stones, and coughed out blood. The shockwaves that were generated by their clash traveled all over the lab room, and the silver stones that Stoney used to reinforce the lab, started to crack. Before Evan could understand what happened, he felt a strong gust of sharp wind coming towards him. He immediately used temporal velocity and wind manipulation to increase his agility, and quickly moved away from there. Just as he moved away. Boom. Something crashed at the place he was a moment ago. When Evan looked there, he saw Amara standing there, looking at him with a faint smile on her face. He ignored her smile and looked at her hands which were now looking like the claws of a monster. Her hands were dark violet in color, and nails that were 10 centimeters long were coming out from them. Now, I understand why her rank suddenly increased to S rank. Evan narrowed his eyes when he saw Amara's claw-like hands. From the moment Evan saw Amara, he felt it was strange that she became an S rank hunter, because according to Kazil, it was just a few months ago she reached A plus rank. It is simply impossible for normal people to reach the S rank in just a few months, after reaching to A plus rank. Unlike Evan who has the monarch core that can stabilize his prime core, normal people have to wait for a long time to stabilize their core after advancing. This is why Evan was surprised when he saw Amara was S rank hunter. But after seeing those claw-like hands, he can finally guess how she reached S rank. You fused yourself with an S rank monster, Evan said in a questioning tone, but his voice was filled with certainty. Oh, so you can tell Amara raised an eyebrow when she heard Evan, but she soon smiled and nodded her head. It wasn't that long ago since I fused myself with the monster, and this is the first time I'm using this power. Evan didn't show much reaction on the outside, but inwardly he was quite shocked. In the central city when he faced the people sent by Sarah, he saw how the power of those people increased when they used the power of monsters. The B plus rank hunters reached the peak of A rank when they fully transformed into humanoid monsters. Amara reached S rank after fusing herself with an S rank monster. So Evan wasn't even sure how much her strength would increase if she fully transformed. Now. Do you regret coming here? Amara asked with a cold smile on her face when she saw Evan was not saying anything. When Evan heard her, he stopped looking at her claw-like hands. Regret you say Evan muttered, and a white light covered his right arm that was broken because of his earlier clash against Amara. Amara narrowed her eyes when she noticed Evan's hand was healing at a speed visible to the naked eye. If you think you have already won then you are greatly mistaken Evan said and stopped using regeneration after his hand was fully healed. I was just being careful while using my strength because I was afraid of turning you into a meat paste. But since you fused yourself with an S rank monster, I think I don't have to worry about that anymore. Suddenly a powerful aura erupted from Evan's body and he bolted towards Amara. 
ignorant fool, Amara said with a sneer on her face when she saw Evan charging toward her. Her claw-like hands glowed with purple light, and she slashed at him. While rushing towards Amara, Evan used power aura, wind manipulation, mana reinforcement and temporal velocity. Amara thought Evan would dodge her attack to avoid getting injured like last time, but she was shocked when Evan lifted one of his hands and grabbed the claw that she used to slash at him. Impossible Amara was shocked when Evan caught hold of her claw without getting injured, and no matter how much strength she applied, she was not able to pull her claw back. She was about to use her second claw to attack, but before she could attack Evan's eyes glowed, and he used the mind suppression skill. Ah, Amara felt a splitting headache and lost focus for a moment. I hope you don't die from just this. Before she could regain her focus, she heard Evan's voice and the next second a punch that was releasing sonic vibrations landed on her stomach, sending her flying backwards like a broken kite. Chapter 527 Why? A gut-wrenching sound echoed inside the lab room, and Evan's punch sent Amara flying backwards with the speed of a bullet. The powerful vibrations of the sonic resonance punch penetrated her internal organs, and she coughed out blood mixed with her organs in the mid-air. Bang. Crack. Amara's body hit the wall of the lab room, and Evan heard the sound of bones cracking. The silver stones reinforcing the wall turned to debris due to the impact, and Stony once again had to use its skills to prevent the wall from collapsing. Asterisk cough, asterisk cough. Amara coughed out even more blood after dropping to the ground, and her entire body shook due to the pain she was feeling. Evan didn't want to give her any chance to recover. So he used wind manipulation and created tens of green spears that were spinning like drills and shot them towards her like bullets. A feeling of extreme danger engulfed Amara's body and she subconsciously took out one A plus rank core from her storage ring. Just as she took out the core, the barrier that she used earlier activated once again. Bang, 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 bang. The wind spears clashed against the barrier one after another, but they were not able to break it because of the high level of energy that the A-plus rank core was providing it. Unlike Evan who could ignore the barrier because of his shadow walk skill, the wind spears were different and could not do the same. I thought that lab coat was a normal cloth, but it seems I was wrong Evan thought when he saw the lab coat Amara was wearing was still working, even after she clashed against the wall with the speed of a bullet. I need to finish her before she pulls off another trick, although Evan caught her off guard earlier because of his abnormal physical strength and injured her seriously. He knew it wouldn't be easy to kill her if he gave her time to recover, so he stopped using wind spears when he saw they were useless and charged towards her while she was still trying to stand up. He arrived in front of her in an instant and using the shadow walk entered the barrier that was protecting her. I knew you would enter the barrier. But just as he entered the barrier, he heard Amara's mumbling, and a dangerous feeling engulfed him. The A-plus rank core that Amara was holding turned into dust, and its energy was absorbed by her lab coat. Just as the energy was absorbed by it, a formation that looked like a bolt of lightning lit up on the coat and... Crackle! A crackling sound rang out, and a storm of purple lightning erupted from Amara's body. F.U. Asterisk K. Evan couldn't help but curse when he saw tens of lightning arcs that were coming out from Amara's body. He was just one meter away from her when the lightning arcs came out, so it was impossible for him to dodge them even though he was using temporal velocity skill. He created a wind barrier around him to stop the lightning arcs, but because of not having enough time to strengthen the barrier, the wind barrier shattered just after stopping a few arcs of lightning. Damn it, a few lightning arcs struck Evan's body, and he felt numbing and burning sensation all over his body. Just when more lightning arcs were about to hit him, a wall made of silver stones rose in front of him, stopping all the lightning arcs. Because of the wall created by Stony, Evan got enough time to back away, and he successfully escaped from the range of lightning arcs. After backing away he looked at his hands that were burnt because of lightning arcs, and a dark expression appeared on his face. He took a deep breath and activated his regeneration skill once again. Stony, remove the wall. When Stony removed the stone wall, Evan saw Amara drinking a potion that was light golden in color. 
Isn't this the potion that Sarah drank when I broke her arm during a fight? Evan thought inwardly when he saw the potion that Amara was drinking. Just as Amara drank the potion, her broken bones and damaged internal organs started to heal at an astounding speed. Damn, the power of this potion is almost equal to my regeneration skill Evan's mouth could not help but twitch when he saw the ridiculous speed at which Mara's injuries were healing. You f you asterisk her, I will give you the most painful death, Amara said while gritting her teeth, because of the pain that she was feeling. All of her broken bones were twisting and moving, because of the effect of the potion. Just by looking at it, anyone could tell that it was a very painful healing process. Alright, my regeneration is far better than this potion, Evan immediately took back his earlier words because his regeneration skill doesn't give him pain. Suddenly he saw Amara taking out a round formation plate from her storage ring. Do you think you can beat me in my own territory? Amara yelled out loud and activated the formation plate. Just as she used the formation plate, all the hidden formations that were inside the lab room were activated. Your strength is reducing due to strength dissipation formation. Your agility is reducing due to agility dissipation formation. Your stamina is reducing due to stamina dissipation formation. Your mana is reducing due to mana dissipation formation. Your mind is being affected by the holo maze illusion formation right parenthesis. Notifications one after another started to appear in front of Evan, and he looked at them with a startled expression on his face. Before he could read them, he felt his power weakening and a strange energy trying to invade his mind, making it hard for him to focus around him. Although I expected her to use formations, isn't five formations a bit too much? Chapter 528 Due to the illusion formation, Evan felt a strange energy trying to invade his mind. But because of his high spiritual power, the illusion was completely ineffective against him. He just created a mental barrier using his spiritual power and completely ignored the illusion formation. But the other four formations were still effective against him due to the effect of strength, agility, mana and stamina dissipation formations. He lost a great amount of his power. But these four formations were still inferior to the absolute ceiling formation. It's good that these formations are not affecting my monarch core Evan side in relief when he saw only his prime core was affected by these formations. Unlike the absolute ceiling formation which was able to affect both of his prime core and monarch core, these four formations were unable to reduce the power of his monarch core. He only lost the stats provided by his prime core, so unlike last time where he lost more than 80% of his power, because of the absolute ceiling formation, he lost only around 30% of his power, because of these four formations. Just when Evan was feeling relieved that he didn't lose all of his strength, his expression changed. Bang, bang, he looked in the direction of the laboratory, and saw the walls of the lab room were shaking, because someone started to attack the walls from the outside. Ha ha ha. Now you understand Amara started laughing seeing Evan's expression. The moment I activated the formations, they all received a signal. Now it is only a matter of seconds before they storm this lab room and tear you to pieces. Evan stopped looking at the walls that were shaking and looked at Amara, who was laughing like a maniac. Slowly his lips curled upwards, and he looked at her with an amused smile. Is that so? When Amara heard Evan and saw his amused smile, she stopped laughing and felt something was not right. It was also the moment when she realized one more thing. Why are you not being affected by my illusion formation? Earlier she didn't pay any attention to it, because she had successfully alerted everyone outside about Evan and thought he couldn't do anything. But now looking at his smile, she started to get a bad feeling about it. When Evan heard her, he didn't answer her question, and just looked at her with a clear smile on his face. Bang, bang, bang. People were still attacking from outside and trying to enter the lab room by breaking doors and walls. But even after 30 seconds, no one was able to break the walls or doors. It was also the moment when Amara realized another fact and looked at Stony, whom Evan summoned in the beginning. You underscore, she looked at Stony for a moment before looking back at Evan with hate-filled eyes. Looks like you finally realized, Evan said, and started to walk towards Amara. Did you think that Stony wasn't helping me in the fight because I wanted to defeat you alone? Amara gritted her teeth after listening to Evan because she really thought so. She looked at the walls in the direction of the lab door, and after seeing how they were reinforced with tens of thick silver stone walls, 
Her anger reached a completely different level. You bastard Amara glared at Evan and said in anger-filled voice. Just by looking at those silver walls, she could tell that it would take at least a few minutes for the people who were outside to break them. Calm down, calm down. So what if they can't come inside to help me for the time being? I can still kill him by myself. After all, he is being affected by my formation, Amara thought, and regained some of her confidence. I don't think your plan is going to work. Just as she regained her confidence, she heard Evan's voice and saw he was already standing in front of her. You underscore she immediately slashed at his neck using her claw. But Evan stepped aside and easily dodged her attack. He used power aura and mana reinforcement and kicked her right in her stomach, sending her flying backwards. Before Amara could clash against the wall after being sent flying away, Evan appeared beside her and grabbed her head in midair. If you think these formations can save you then you are just dreaming, Evan shouted and smashed her head to the ground of the lab room. Boom. Ah, the silver stones covering the floor were shattered at the point of impact, and Amara cried out in pain, as her nose and teeth were broken. Even though these shitty formations reduced my power and I can't kill you with just one or two attacks. Evan said and lifted Amara by head once again. I still have enough power to take care of you. Boom. He said and smashed her face to the ground once again. Amara wanted to break free from Evan's attacks. But no matter how hard she tried, it was all useless. Boom. Evan once again smashed her face to the ground. Because of repeated attacks, Amara's face was already distorted, and the ground was dyed red because of her blood. I know this was the best way to use my soul absorption, skill Evan thought inwardly as he beat the hell out of Amara, despite being affected by the four formations. Kai underscore you. Hum. He suddenly heard a strange sound and looked at Amara who was lying in the puddle of her own blood. Did you say something? Evan asked as he lifted her once again by grabbing her head. Her mouth and face were already a mess, so she was not able to speak properly. I jai kai you. Evan felt confused because he was not able to understand her. Should I forgive you? I said I will kill you. Suddenly Amara shouted in a heretic voice and a purple aura burst forth from her body. The force that came out from her body was so powerful that Evan who was holding her by the head was blown away and crashed against the wall. After crashing against the wall, Evan quickly stood up and looked in Amara's direction, only to be stunned by the sight. I started to wonder why she was not using the full power of her monster transformation. But looking at her now, I think even she can't control the ego of an S-rank monster. Chapter 529 Iguanox is one of the rarest monsters in the entire Aurora world. This monster somewhat resembles a giant lizard with dragon-like scales all over its body. Iguanox monsters can only be found deep within the wilderness, and they usually live as a group. In a sense, Iguanox monsters are even rarer than Goblin Kings. The power of Iguanox is very high when compared to other monsters of the same rank. A single A rank Iguanox can even face three normal A rank monsters, because of its high attack power and monstrous like defense. Some people even speculate that Iguanox monsters have a portion of the true dragon bloodline. But no one can confirm whether this is true or not, because there is no real dragon in Aurora world. Evan had never actually seen an Iguanox. But he had seen many pictures of them, and judging by Amara's current appearance, he could easily guess that the monster she had fused herself with was definitely an S-rank Iguanox. How did she manage to capture an S-rank Iguanox? Evan couldn't help but think as he looked at the new appearance of Amara. G -r -r -r, G -r -r -r. After turning into a humanoid monster, she was now 3 meters tall. Her head was triangular and shaped with a sharp, pointed snout. Her eyes were large with a brilliant shade of amber and gold. Both of her arms were deep purple in color, and were looking like sharp claws. Her feet also became wider and deep purple nails that were 5 centimeters long, were coming out from them. The rest of her body was emerald green in color with subtle hints of blue and yellow accents on the scales that were covering her. A one meter long tail that was filled with sharp spikes was coming out from her back. Her mouth was slightly open, and saliva was dripping down on the floor from it. The aura that was coming out from her was far more powerful than before. But looking at her eyes which were filled with madness, Evan could tell that she had already lost control over herself, and was now being controlled by the monstrous nature of Iguanox. 
While he was still looking at her, suddenly warning bells started ringing in his head. F.U. asterisk K without thinking anything, Evan immediately used 100 E rank souls as fuel, and dashed away from there using temporal velocity skill. Just as he moved away, Bujudum, a loud explosion happened at the place he was standing, and golden fire burst forth from the ground. Even though he arrived at the other end of the lab room in an instant, Evan was still struck by the shockwaves and smashed against the wall. Damn, this place is too small to fight against her anymore. Earlier, Amara was mostly relying on the formations that were engraved on her lab coat to fight against Evan, because her class was not a fighting type class. But now that she started to use the power of Iguanox, that are known for their firepower, it was very hard for him to fight against her without getting injured in such a cramped place. Before he could stand up after getting smashed against the wall, Evan felt scorching heat coming from behind his back. Stony, he immediately called out for Stony and created a wind barrier to protect himself. Just as he created the wind barrier, a wall made of silver stones also rose in front of him. Just as the silver stone wall rose, boom, a golden fireball struck it. The entire lab room, which was half of the size of a football stadium, was engulfed in golden flames, and shockwaves spread all over the room. I think you should take a look at a acute plus or minus d plus or minus snovel dot c inverted question mark m. The silver stones that were reinforcing the room started to crumble, and the foundation of the lab room became incredibly weak. The wall that Stony created to protect Evan shattered the moment the golden fireball struck it. And Evan had to use soul absorption skill in order to increase the power of the wind barrier to protect himself. Bang, bang. The people who were attacking from outside also realized that the walls were weakened and the intensity of their attacks also increased. I will kill you. Amara's eyes were filled with madness and she continued to attack Evan using her golden flames. I can't even summon my shadow undeads here because there is not enough room for them to fight properly. They will just make this tight space even tighter. Evan muttered in a low voice and furrowed his eyebrows. Should I use that skill? He thought after seeing he was not able to fight back properly because of the cramped space. But I need to secure those teleportation formations before I use that skill. Otherwise I won't be able to escape after this entire base collapses. Evan looked at the silver walls that were blocking people from outside from entering the laboratory and made up his mind. Stony removed the walls and let them in. A acute plus or minus D plus or minus S inverted question mark vel dot C inverted question mark M Stony immediately followed Evan's order and removed the silver stone walls that were stopping the people and monsters who were outside. When the silver walls disappeared and Evan saw the scene outside of the lab room, his mouth twitched uncontrollably. Although I already expected something like this when I decided to come here, this scene is still quite eerie. The outside of the lab room was filled with different kinds of humanoid monsters that he saw after entering the laboratory. Other than the humanoid monsters, all the monsters that were above the elevator were also gathered inside the laboratory. Evan was not afraid of the monsters. But the thing that was creeping him out was the lifeless eyes of the monsters that were gathered outside. Seeing the silver stone walls disappear, the humanoid monsters in front immediately entered the lab room. Evan was about to summon his shadow undeads, seeing the humanoid monsters were coming towards him. But before he summoned could them, something unexpected happened. The aura of all the monsters that entered the lab room suddenly started to drop, and their lifeless eyes became dazed. All of them suddenly stopped charging towards him and stood in the same place without moving an inch. Evan was stunned when he saw this and for a moment did not understand what was happening. But it did not take him long to realize what was happening, and he looked at Amara like he was looking at an old friend. Chapter 530 When the humanoid monsters entered the lab room, all of them were affected by the five formations that Amara activated earlier. Normally she would have been able to control the formations, so that they would not affect the humanoid monsters. But now that she had already lost her mind and was not controlling the formations manually, even humanoid monsters were being affected by the formations. Most of the humanoid monsters ranged from B rank to A rank, so their spiritual power was not strong enough to fend off the effect of illusion formation like Evan. They just took a few steps inside the lab room before they were trapped inside the illusion and stopped dead in their tracks. Amara was already being controlled by her monster instincts, 
So when she saw those humanoid monsters, she opened her mouth and spat out a jet of golden flames on them. The monsters were trapped in illusion, so they were not able to do anything and turned into charcoal because of the powerful flames of Amara. When the humanoid monsters who were outside of the lab room saw what happened to the monsters who went inside, their expressions didn't change. Their eyes were still lifeless, and they were looking like puppets that were just following the command that was given to them earlier. More monsters were about to enter the lab room even after seeing what happened when a cold voice rang out. Stop. Just as the voice rang out, all the monsters who were gathered outside of the lab room stopped and stepped aside. Evan was watching everything from the sidelines while protecting himself using the wind barrier. When he heard the voice, he immediately figured out the identity of the person. Volak, just as Evan spoke, he saw a person walking towards the front of the lab room from the back of the monster group. The face of the person was covered by a black scarf, and he was around 6 feet tall. The aura that was coming out from him was that of S-Rank, and he was the second S-Rank hunter whose presence Evan felt after entering the laboratory. Volak didn't enter the lab room and stopped just at the front of the door. He glanced at Evan for a moment before looking at Amara, who was still spewing a jet of golden flames at the humanoid monsters who entered the room earlier. After a few seconds, all the monsters who entered the lab room turned into ashes, and Amara looked at Evan, who was the only one inside the room. I was expecting her to burst out of the room and attack the monsters that are outside, but it looks like she is hell-bent on fighting in this cramped space. Evan said inwardly when he saw Amara was looking at him once again, I should just focus on securing those teleportation formations, so I can eliminate these people all at once with this thought in mind, Evan summoned all of his shadow undeads, except for the titan elephant. The titan elephant was 100 meters tall, so it was simply impossible for him to summon it in such a place. There were more than 98 plus rank shadow undeads that he summoned. The body of Volak who was standing in front of the lab room trembled the moment Evan summoned his shadow undeads. And the aura of so many A plus rank monsters filled the surroundings. Even Amara who was being controlled by her monster instincts couldn't help but take a step back after feeling the auras of so many high level monsters. Using his shadow senses, Evan gave a command to Aqua, Snow, Necros, Astronax and Eclipse. I think you should take a look at a acute plus or minus d plus or minus snovel dot c inverted question mark m. After receiving Evan's command, all five of them led all the shadow undeads and charged towards the exit of the lab room. Back away and prepare for battle. Seeing tens of A plus rank monsters were charging outside, Volak quickly shouted and ordered all the monsters who were gathered outside. He also backed away from the lab room and took out a formation plate from his storage ring. He poured his mana into the formation plate and activated it. Just as he activated the formation plate, different kinds of formations lit up on the walls of the laboratory. All the formations that activated looked similar to the formations that can be seen inside the training ground and were reinforcing the walls of the laboratory. In a fight that involves tens of A plus rankers, Volak knew the chances of the laboratory collapsing would be very high. All the humanoid monsters who were outside backed away when they heard Volak's order, and were prepared to attack the shadow undeads. Just before leaving the lab room, Aqua opened its mouth. Roar! A roar of the dragon resounded throughout the laboratory as Aqua activated its sea dragon's raw skill. A dragon made of water bolted out from the lab and blasted away all the monsters who were preparing to attack shadow undeads just outside of the lab room. Rumble. After blasting away monsters, the dragon clashed against the walls and the entire laboratory shook. Taking advantage of the chaos caused by Aqua, all the shadow undead successfully rushed out of the lab. Astronax, Necros, don't forget what I told you earlier Evan used shadow senses and sent a message after seeing all of his shadow undeads successfully leave the lab room. He looked at Amara who was still shocked because of the sudden appearance of so many A plus monsters and noticed the monstrous nature of Iguanox was once again taking control over her. I should bring her outside as well, so that I can fight her properly Evan thought, and used soul absorption skill to increase the power of of temporal velocity and sonic resonance skills. While Amara was still distracted, he appeared in front of her in an instant. Because of her monster instincts, Amara immediately noticed Evan and was about to move away. But before she could move away, Evan used the ice chain skill, and stopped her from moving away. 
Amara was caught off guard and was not able to react in time. Evan did not miss the opportunity and punched her in the abdomen, sending her flying outside of the lab room. But even after sending her flying ousting of the lab room, Evan did not look happy. Because when he punched her, he realized something. Around 30% power of my punch disappeared because of the scales that are covering her body Evan thought with a serious expression, and dashed out from the lab room as well. Chapter 531 Bang, bang, bang. As Amara flew out of the lab room due to Evan's punch, she collided with some low-level monsters that were fighting outside of the lab, and all of them exploded into blood mist because of the impact. Roar. Although the scales covering Amara's body neglected a large amount of damage, she still roared out in pain upon crashing outside of the lab. Evan also followed after Amara and came out of the lab room. Just as he came out of the room, the effect of the formations that were reducing his power ended, and he recovered his full strength. The first thing that Evan did after coming out of the lab room was to use Sonic Barrier skill to cover the entire laboratory so that no one would be able to escape using the escape scroll. Rumble. The entire laboratory was shaking because of the fight between his shadow undeads and the monsters. Different kinds of skills were being launched everywhere, and the entire laboratory was in a mess. The number of monsters were far higher than his shadow undeads. And just his shadow undeads, the monsters were also not afraid of death. Evan watched as Eclipse cut down the hand of one of the A-rank humanoid monster, but that monster didn't even flinch, and continued to attack Eclipse. Although the number of monsters were higher than his shadow undeads, and these monsters were not afraid of death, they were still not a match for his shadow undeads, because of two reasons. First, all of his shadow undeads were A plus rank, so they were far stronger than the monsters. Second, unlike the monsters who couldn't heal themselves after getting injured, Evan was continuously healing his shadow undeads. So all of them were in perfect condition. If everything continues like this Necros and Astronox will be able to complete the task that I gave to them without any problem. Evan thought inwardly after looking around the laboratory for a brief moment. Suddenly he sidestepped and used his elbow to launch an attack behind his back. Swish. Crack. Just as he stepped aside, a sharp light flashed on the spot where his neck had been a moment before, and his elbow hit the face of Volak who tried to sneak attack him. Arg Volak's jaw was broken because of Evan's elbow, and he staggered backwards. At least try to hide the disgusting aura of the monster that is coming out from your body, if you are planning to launch a sneak attack on someone. Before Volak could recover after getting struck by Evan's elbow, he heard a cold voice, and a sense of impending doom engulfed his body. Without thinking about anything, he instantly used one of his skills and burst into black smoke disappearing from the place he was standing. Just as he disappeared, the black smoke was sliced into two by a giant red colored axe. TCH Evan clicked his tongue when he saw Volak was able to react on time and avoided his surprise attack. He pulled back the giant red axe that he used and rested it on his shoulder. The axe he was holding was releasing the aura of a rank artifact and was looking quite intimidating. It was the axe that he found in Brutus's storage ring. Berserk Furiclover, a rank. An axe made of dense dark steel. When its wielder becomes enraged in battle, this axe enhances their strength and speed, turning them into a berserk. It also grants the ability to shrug off wounds while in this frenzied state. The axe was not as good as his Blazerbringer gauntlets, but it was sharp enough to pose a threat even for an S-ranker, so Evan decided to use it for the time being because his gauntlets were still being repaired. Roar. As Volak disappeared, Amara also recovered from his earlier attack and stood up. A wave of golden flames erupted from her body, and two of his shadow undeads, and one humanoid monster who was closer to her burnt to crisp. She looked at Evan with eyes full of fury and charged towards him. Seeing Amara coming towards him like an enraged bull, Evan smirked and used wind manipulation and soul absorption skills at the same time. The axe he was holding glowed with green light, as the sharp wind started to cover it, at the same time he used 500 souls as fuel to increase the power of wind manipulation. Suddenly the green wind covering the axe lit up with white light, and a sharp aura exploded outward from it. Evan grabbed the hilt of the axe with both of his hands, and swung it towards Amara, who was charging towards him. Stop roaring you dunch head. The monster instincts of Amara warned her about the danger, and she used her left claw to stop the sharp axe. But just as the axe came into contact with her claw that was covered in hard scales of Iguanox, 
Whoosh. The wind that was covering the axe exploded outward, and her claw was sliced off from the rest of her arm. Roar. A painful roar reverted throughout the laboratory, and red blood gushed out from Amara's arm. Evan quickly recovered his balance after swinging the axe, and was about to attack once again. But before he could attack again, his expression changed, and he tried to move sideways. Swish. He barely moved away when Volak appeared at his left side. A sharp dagger light flashed, and a wound was torn open on Evan's left arm, stretching all the way from his shoulder to elbow. F.U. Asterisk K. Evan gritted his teeth and used the axe to push back Volak, while enduring the pain that was coming from his left arm. After pushing Volak back, he looked at his wound and activated the regeneration skill. But when he activated the regeneration skill, Evan saw his wound was healing at a very slow speed. And he was losing the feeling in his left arm. Poison Evan thought and furrowed his eyebrows. While he was still thinking about the poison, his expression once again changed because he noticed the madness in Amara's eyes started to disappear. Because of the pain she was feeling, after losing one of her claws. Chapter 532 Evan's eyes narrowed when he saw the madness in Amara's eyes was disappearing after he cut off one of her claws. Because of not being able to control the power of Iguanox, Amara was attacking like a mindless monster till now. But Evan knew that if she regained her senses, it would not be easy to deal with her. Volak also noticed that Amara was coming back to her senses. So he used telepathy skill and started to help her regain her senses. Evan was easily able to feel the telepathy waves that Volak used because of his high spiritual power, but he did not rush towards him immediately to stop him. He first looked at the wound on his left arm and furrowed his eyebrows. He was continuously using regeneration to heal the wound, but because of the poison, the regeneration skill was not working properly. His blood was turning purple, and he was slowly losing the feeling of his left arm. Just as he was thinking about using an antidote potion, he remembered about the skill that he got inside the mirrored formation dungeon and activated it. Mid-level poison resistance. Just as he activated the skill, purple blood spurted out from his wound, and it started to heal at normal speed because of regeneration skill. Evan sighed in relief when he saw his skill was effective against the poison, and his grip around the axe tightened. Damn, Monster Volak, who saw how Evan's arm was healing, couldn't help but curse him. Evan ignored what Volak was saying and rushed towards Amara, because he wanted to kill her before she comes back to her senses. Volak's expression changed when he saw this, and he immediately appeared in front of Evan to stop him. Evan was already expecting this so just as Volak appeared in front of him, he activated power, aura and mana reinforcement and swung his axe at him. Volak wanted to stop the axe, but Evan's swinging speed was too fast. The axe arrived in front of him in an instant and split his body into two parts. But Evan didn't show any kind of joy. Because suddenly Volak's body exploded into black smoke and disappeared. A sharp light flashed at the back of Evan and Volak appeared there slashing at him with his dagger. Just as his dagger was about to touch Evan's neck two ice chains came out from the ground and stopped Volak from moving. Without even looking back Evan swung his axe at 360 degree angle and beheaded Volak. But just like last time, Volak's body exploded into black smoke, and he disappeared. Damn this guy Evan couldn't help but curse when he saw this. Suddenly this time two Volak appeared around Evan attacking him at the same time. Evan gritted his teeth and dodged both of their attacks, and used the axe to split them once again. But just like before, both of them turned into black smoke and disappeared. Just as Evan was racing his mind to find a solution, an idea came into his mind. From the looks of it, these clones disappear as soon as they receive some damage. If that's the case then, Evan thought inwardly and activated one of his most powerful skills. Death Ring. A black swelling ring formed around Evan and instantly covered the area of 3 kilometers. Just like before, two Volak appeared around Evan attacking him at the same time. But even before they could swing their daggers, both of them exploded into black smoke because of Death Ring. Got you just as both of them exploded into black smoke, Evan looked at his right side and said in a cold voice. Volak who was hiding all this time, suddenly appeared at the place where Evan was looking at. He was completely stunned because of the effect of Death Ring. That was draining his life force. After finding his location, Evan did not give him any chance, and immediately appeared in front of him. Volak wanted to move away using his high agility, but two ice chains came out of the ground, binding him at the same place. 
See your FU asterisk curb before Volak could break free from the ice chains he heard Evan's voice, and his world turned upside down as Evan beheaded him using his axe. Thud. A fountain of blood erupted from Volak's neck, and his body dropped to the ground. Evan did not relax even after beheading Volak, because he still remembered what happened to Sarah. Moreover, from Volak's aura, he could tell that Amara fused him with a monster. But during the fight, Volak never transformed into a humanoid monster. But the next second Evan was baffled because he saw a soul orb that was half black and half multicolored come out of Volak's body. Evan could see soul orbs only after the death of a person, and since he was able to see Volak's soul orb, it means that he was definitely dead. Why didn't this guy use the power of the fused monster when fighting against me? Evan thought and looked at the soul orb that was half black and half multicolored. I never saw a soul orb like this. Evan was confused about many things, but he knew it was not the time for this. He used shadow storage and put Volak's body into it. He did not absorb Volak's soul orb using soul absorption, because he wanted to turn him into a shadow undead. And if he absorbs his soul orb, he will not be able to turn him into a shadow undead. After putting away Volak's body, Evan immediately turned around and looked at Amara. During the time he was dealing with Volak, all the monsters were also caught inside the death ring and were losing their life force. Most of the monsters in the laboratory were either A rank or B rank, so they were losing 3% of their life force with each passing second. Amara was the same, and she was also losing 3% of her life force with each passing second when he activated the death ring skill in the beginning. But after dealing with Volak when Evan turned around and looked at her, he saw she was not losing her life force anymore, and the madness in her eyes already disappeared. Chapter 533 After leaving the lab room Aqua, Eclipse, and Snow led the Shadow Undeads to fight against the monsters who were present in the laboratory. While they were fighting, Necros and Astronox rushed forward, going straight towards the back of the laboratory where the elevator was located. Some monsters tried to stop them, but the power of Necros and Astronax was very best among the a plus rank monsters, so no one was able to stop them. Necros was using Strength Enhancement skill to increase his power by 100%, so all the monsters who tried to stop them were torn apart by him. Meanwhile, Astronox was stopping the attacks of the monsters who were attacking them from the distance. Both of them worked in perfect harmony, and soon they reached at the back of the laboratory. Kevin was still there with Rowan and other people. All of them had terrified expressions on their faces, and they were hiding behind the equipments in the laboratory, protecting themselves from the shockwaves of the battle. When Astronox and Necros saw Kevin and others, they immediately rushed towards them. Seeing Necros and Astronox coming towards them, Kevin and others turned pale, and their eyes flashed with despair. Kevin was the only A-rank hunter among them, but even he felt his legs shaking when he saw Necros, who was coming towards him like a bull. He tried to muster up the courage and launch an attack, but before he could launch any attack, Necros arrived before him and grabbed him by his head. Rowan and others looked at everything with horror-filled eyes, as Necros' hand lit up with red light in the next second. Bang. Like a watermelon, he crushed Kevin's head, killing him instantly. After killing him, Necros threw away Kevin's body like a rag doll, and with his hand, gestured to Rowan and others to follow him and Astronax. After killing some monsters who were at the back, Necros and Astronox started to move towards the elevator. They didn't wait for Rowan and others, because Evan told them to secure the teleportation formations as soon as possible. If Rowan and others followed them then good. If not, then it was not their problem. Rowan and others were baffled when they saw Necros was signaling them to follow him. All of them were already afraid because of the recent events, so they didn't follow them immediately. But when they saw Necros and Astronox were going towards the elevator, they all looked at each other and followed after them. There were two a rank monsters in front of the elevator, but both of them were easily crushed by Astronox. The elevator was quite big, so Necros and Astronox were easily able to get inside it. After getting inside, when they saw Rowan and others were coming towards them, they waited for them to get inside. After coming in front of the elevator, the legs of Rowan and others were shaking. They all gulped down their saliva and went inside the elevator, praying that Necros wouldn't crush their skulls like he had crushed Kevin's. After they entered, Astronox activated the elevator, and it started moving upwards. 
When the elevator reached at the top of the laboratory and stopped, Astronox and Necros stepped forward and gestured for Rowan and others to stay inside the elevator. Just as the door of the elevator opened, Astronox jumped out and activated his Titanic Resilience skill. Titanic Resilience, unique skill. When activated, you gain temporary invulnerability to all incoming damage, allowing you to easily ignore all attacks. However, you cannot attack or use other skills during this state. The invulnerability status will last for 10 seconds, and can only be used once every 3 hours. Just as he activated the skill, two A-plus rank humanoid monsters who looked like Behrman came out of nowhere and attacked him. These two were the humanoid monsters whose presence Evan felt earlier when Kevin brought him here. Boom. The shockwaves from their attack spread all over the surroundings, and the ground was cracked open like it would collapse at any moment. The building where the elevator was located crumbled in an instant, and Necros had to stop the shock waves that came toward the elevator so that it would not crash down. When the entire building crumbled and the dust settled down, both of the Bannon were stunned to see that Astronox was completely fine. They immediately tried to back away from him. But before they could back away, Necros rushed out of the elevator. The storage ring that he was wearing glowed a little, and a black mace appeared in his hand. Evan found this mace in the storage ring of Omers whom he killed after coming out of Myriad Formation Dungeon. Roar. Necros roared out loud after coming in front of one of the bearmen. He used size manipulation skill to increase the size of his hand and swung the mace to crush the head of the bearman. The bearman tried to stop the mace using his hands, but suddenly Astronox grabbed him and stopped him from moving. Bang! The mace came into contact with bearman's head and with a loud bang, the head of the bearman exploded and blood and brain matter splashed all over the place. Necros and Astronx did not stop after killing the first Bearman, and moved toward the second one. Although the Bearman just saw the death of his companion, his eyes were still hollow, and there was no emotion in them. But Astronx and Necros did not care about his expressions, and killed him in just a few minutes. After killing both of the Bearman, they signaled Rowan and others to follow them, and rushed towards the teleportation formation. When they reached the first formation, Astronox decided to stay there and Necros used the formation to go to the upper labyrinth, along with Rowan and others. There was no one in the upper labyrinth, so Necros soon reached the warehouse where the second teleportation formation was located. When he opened the door and went inside, Necros saw Glenn and the other three hunters who were with Kevin. All four hunters were stunned when they saw Necros, because they could feel the overwhelming difference in their strength. After seeing Glenn and others, Necros immediately bolted toward them with his giant body. The faces of Glenn and others turned pale when they saw Necros coming towards them. They wanted to fight back, but the difference in their power was just too great, and all four of them were soon killed by Necros. After killing them, Necros immediately came near the teleportation and sent a message to Evan. Chapter 534 After coming back to her senses, the first thing that Amara noticed was the death ring. That was draining her life force. Noticing her life force was disappearing at a speed visible to the naked eye, Amara immediately covered herself in a powerful layer of golden flames. The layer of golden flames pushed back the death ring, and Amara finally sighed in relief, after seeing she was not losing her life force anymore. But the joy of stopping the death ring didn't last long as the next thing she saw was Evan decapitating Volak. Her body trembled with anger when she saw Volak getting killed by Evan. That bastard, he didn't use that power until his very last moment Amara, cursed Volak, and used the regeneration skill of a Gornax, which was not inferior to Evan's regeneration skill. The blood that was dripping from her claw stopped because of the regeneration, and it started to heal at a rapid speed. Before Evan could turn around after killing Volak, she took a new formation plate from her storage ring. That was completely different from the other formation plates. I will make sure you regret coming here, Amara muttered in a low voice, and started to pour her mana into the formation plate. When Evan turned around to finish off Amara, he was stunned to see she was not losing her life force anymore, and was pouring her mana into a formation plate. Seeing the glowing formation plate in Amara's hand, a bad feeling started to rise in Evan's heart. Without thinking about anything, he immediately charged towards her. Flame wall. But before he could reach her, a wall of golden flames rose in front of her, blocking Evan's path. 
Split seeing the wall of golden flames, Evan roared out loud and swung his axe using power, aura and wind manipulation. A powerful force erupted from the axe the moment Evan swung it, and the flame wall was blasted away. Crackle! But right after blasting the flame wall, the first thing that Evan saw was a bolt of purple lightning coming towards him. Evan still had to regain his balance after swinging the axe to blast away the flame wall, so he had no chance of dodging the lightning bolt. He brought the large blade of the axe in front of him and tried to stop the lightning bolt. Boom. The lightning bolt struck the blade of the axe and Evan was blasted backwards because of the impact. Because of the destructive property of the lightning, Evan felt a stinging pain all over his body and his hands started to turn numb. He balanced his body in mid-air and landed 30 meters away from Amara after being blasted away. Before he could move towards her once again, the walls of the laboratory lit up and different kinds of formations appeared on them. The formations that Volak activated to keep the laboratory intact were still there, but they shrank to small size after Amara activated the new formations. There were more than 100 formations that Amara activated, and all the walls of the laboratory were filled with them. For some reason, when Evan looked at those formations, he felt goosebumps rising all over his body. Die you bastard suddenly, Amara shouted out loud, and all the formations that were on the wall lit up. F U asterisk underscore before Evan could even curse, all the formations released different kinds of attacks all over the laboratory at the same time. Some formations released giant ice icicles, some released fireballs, some released sword lights, some released lightning bolts, and many different kinds of attacks. There were so many that even with the help of temporal velocity, Evan was not able to keep track of them all. The worst thing was that the attacks launched by every single formation were comparable to the attack of an A plus rank hunter. It was like 100 A plus rank hunters launched the attack at the same time. F asterisk CK this crazy woman. Does she want to destroy the entire laboratory and bury everyone here alive? Evan quickly stopped using Death Ring, which already killed most of the monsters that were inside the laboratory, and raised one of his palms. Green Wind started to spin above his palm like a cyclone, and he directly used 5000 souls as fuel to increase the power of his wind manipulation skill. The moment he used the souls as fuel, the small green cyclone above his palm suddenly became 100 meters in diameter and started to spin above his head like a shield. Because of using 5000 souls to increase the power of wind manipulation, Evan found it very hard to control the wind cyclone that was spinning above him. Just as he used the souls to increase the power of the wind cyclone, all the attacks released by the formations came into contact with it. Fireballs, icicles, sword lights, water lance and many different kinds of attacks came into contact with the wind cyclone and were caught inside it. Boom, bang, bang, boom. All the fireballs exploded inside the wind cyclone and icicles turned into icy dust. The sword lights and lightning bolts tried to tear apart the wind cyclone, but Evan poured his mana into the cyclone without caring about the consumption. The normal wind cyclone turned into an elemental cyclone. That was filled with the destructive power of elements in an instant because of so many attacks. Most of Evan's shadow undeads who were inside the laboratory were killed by the shock waves of the attacks. Blood started to leak out from the corner of Evan's mouth as he tried his best to stop all the attacks and shock waves. After spending around 70% of his mana, Evan was finally able to stop all the attacks of the formations and neutralize the destructive elements that were filling the wind cyclone. Just when Evan was sighing in relief that he stopped the attacks of the formations, his face turned white because all the formations once again lit up. He looked at Amara and saw a big smile on her lizard-like face. He immediately took out a full mana recovery potion and gulped it down. Just as he drank the potions, all the attack formations once again released their attacks. The wind cyclone that was spinning above his head was already very weak after stopping so many attacks. So Evan had to use 5000 souls once again in order to increase its power. Damn, the cyclone became completely unstable. It was already hard for Evan to control the cyclone after using the 5000 souls earlier. Now that he used 5000 souls once again, the wind cyclone became completely unstable. Evan was preparing himself to stop the attacks of the formations, but his expression suddenly changed. 
Did you forget about me? Amara appeared in front of him and slashed at him using her sharp claw. Just as Evan was thinking about what he should do, he finally received a message from Necros and Astronox. Chapter 535 Just as Evan received the message from Necros, Amara appeared before him and slashed his neck with her sharp claws. Evan was completely unprepared for her attack, as his entire attention was focused on the attacks released by the formations. So he had no chance of dodging the attack. Damn at the last moment just when her claws were about to sever his neck, Evan brought the blade of the axe in front of her claws to block the attack. Clank. Crack. The sound of metal colliding against metal rang out. And even though the axe was an A-rank artifact, some cracks appeared on its blade due to Amara's high strength. Arg a painful grunt escaped from Evan's mouth as the force of the attack was transferred to him from the blade. And he flew backwards like a broken kite. Bang. He crashed against the wall of the laboratory and coughed out a mouthful of blood. The wind cyclone was already unstable, so it immediately disappeared the moment Evan lost focus for a split second after being blasted away. Just as the wind cyclone disappeared, the hundreds of formations that were inside the laboratory released their attacks. A sense of extreme danger engulfed Evan's body as he watched hundreds of attacks coming towards him like a tsunami. Just before the attacks released by the formations landed on him, Evan opened his mouth and muttered something in a low voice. Just as he muttered, a streak of black light came flying out from the lab room where Evan was fighting against Amara earlier. Boom. 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 All the attacks released by formation landed at the place Evan was standing, and the sound of explosions filled the entire laboratory. Flames of fireballs engulfed the laboratory and the coldness of the icicles froze the ground. The sword lights were tearing apart everything that was coming in their paths, and arcs of lightning were crackling all over the places. Rumble. The entire laboratory shook and cracks appeared on the formations that were keeping the laboratory intact. Bang. Suddenly one of the formations that was keeping the laboratory intact shattered, and one part of the laboratory collapsed due to it. Smoke and dust flew everywhere, and it became extremely difficult to see anything inside the laboratory. He should be dead, right? Amara said to herself after all the attacks landed at the place Evan was a moment ago. Every single attack released by the formations was comparable to the attack of an A-plus rank hunter. So in her eyes, the chances of anyone surviving after taking so many attacks head-on were close to none. She used her spiritual senses to check the result of her attacks. But the moment she activated her spiritual senses, she sensed that the sonic barrier that Evan deployed earlier was still active. His skill is still working this me underscore. Before Amara could finish speaking, her instincts started to scream. Whoosh. The smoke and dust cloud that was filling the place was blown away, and a stone bullet that was 10 centimeters big came flying towards her like a missile. SH asterisk Tiamara tried to step aside, but the stone bullet was as fast as a streak of light and instantly appeared in front of her, Poochie. Before she could dodge the bullet, it struck her shoulder and pierced the hard scale of Iguanox like it was made of paper. Roar. Amara roared out in pain like a beast, and a fountain of red blood erupted as the stone bullet created a hole in her shoulder. She gritted her teeth due to pain, and quickly backed away to create more distance between herself and Evan. While retreating, she looked at the spot where Evan was standing, when the attacks of the formations landed, and her golden amber eyes widened in disbelief. What the hell is this thing? Amara muttered in a shocked filled voice, is instead of Evan. What she saw was a three meters tall monster, that looked like a combination of human and buffalo. The monster was standing on two feet like a human, two large stone horns were coming out from the top of its head, and its face was looking like an African bison. Its entire body was made of stones, and there were many cracks all over its body like it was seriously wounded. F U asterisk K, I am feeling like my entire body would shatter at any moment Evan grunted in pain, as the cracks on his stony body were slowly enlarging. Earlier, just before the attacks of the formations landed on him, he used shadow possession, and fused himself with the shadow undead of the stone buffalo. Although the defense of the stone buffalo was very high, and he even created some stone walls to protect himself, it was simply impossible for him to completely avoid the hundreds of powerful attacks. At least I survived, Evan said in a low voice, and used death transfer skill to instantly heal himself. After healing himself, he looked at Amara who was still standing with her eyes wide open. 
You underscore what the hell are you? When Amara saw the stone monster that was looking like a humanoid buffalo was looking at her, she couldn't help but ask. I just have 2 minutes and 50 seconds left to finish off everything Evan ignored Amara, and looked at the timer of shadow possession skill. His spiritual senses erupted with full power and instantly covered a vast area. Just as Evan used his spiritual senses, Amara felt a powerful mental pressure boring down on her mind. Because of fusing himself with the stone buffalo, Evan's current spiritual power was simply off the charts. In an instant, Evan covered both of the labyrinths with his spiritual senses, and discovered the locations of Necros and Astronox, who were standing near the teleportation formations. Amara felt her blood turn cold, when she felt the powerful mental pressure that Evan was releasing, just by using his spiritual senses. Just by feeling the power of his spiritual senses, she could tell that it was simply impossible for her to defeat Evan on her own. Without any second thought, she once again activated all the attack formations. Although there was a very high chance of the laboratory collapsing because of the attacks of formations, she did not care about that, because she was thinking about running away using an escape scroll after killing Evan. All the attack formations that were on the wall once again lit up. Evan felt the energy fluctuations coming out from the attack formation, but he completely ignored them. I need to make sure that I won't affect the area around the teleportation formations Evan said inwardly and took a deep breath. Suddenly his right foot lit up with blue light, and a dominant pressure filled the entire labyrinth. He took a step forward and smashed his right foot to the ground while activating one of Stone Buffalo's skill. Earthquake. Chapter 536. Evan took a step forward and smashed his right foot to the ground while activating one of Stone Buffalo's skill. Earthquake. Rumble. Just as Evan smashed his right foot to the ground, the entire labyrinth started to shake. What th underscore the tremors were so high that Amara lost her balance and fell to the ground. The formations that Volak activated to keep the laboratory intact were already very weak after handling the previous attacks of the formations. So the moment Evan used the earthquake skill, the formations were not able to handle the pressure anymore. Bang, bang, bang. All the formations that were keeping the laboratory intact started to shatter like glass. Rumble. Just as the formations started to shatter, the shaking of the laboratory intensified and cracks appeared all over the walls. Are you insane? Do you want to bury both of us alive here? Amara's lizard-like face turned pale when she saw the walls of the laboratory were cracking, and she shouted in a horror-filled voice. Even though her power was stronger than an S-rank hunter, because of using the power of Iguanox, she knew she would still die if the entire labyrinth collapsed, because they were still two and a half kilometers underground. Evan didn't care about what Amara was saying and looked at the attack formations that were slowly losing their glow, and sighed in relief. The attack formations were engraved on the walls of the laboratory, and since the walls were cracking, the attack formations also started to crack. When Amara saw Evan was not replying to her, she took out an escape scroll, and tried to run away from there. But when she activated the scroll, her face turned ugly because the scroll was not working. Evan was still using the sonic barrier through the world essence, so it was simply impossible for her to escape from there using the escape scroll. Rumble. Suddenly one of the walls of the laboratory collapsed, and the destruction of the labyrinth intensified. I have to finish this in two minutes as Evan looked at the remaining time of shadow possession, and said inwardly. He pressed his feet to the ground. Bang. The shaking ground was split open, and he shot toward Amara like a bull. Don't waste your time because today you are going to die here, Evan shouted when he saw Amara was still trying to use the escape scroll, and appeared in front of her in an instant. He closed his stony palm into a fist, and threw a punch at her without holding back. Amara felt the aura of death engulfing her the moment Evan threw the punch towards her, and she subconsciously crossed her arms in front of her in the X shape. Evan's fist came into contact with Amara's arms and... Crack! Arg the sound of bones breaking rang out, and she was sent flying backwards with the speed of a bullet. After fusing himself with the stone buffalo, Evan's physical strength was on a completely different level. If not for the fact that Amara merged herself with an S-rank Iguanox, she would have already turned into meat paste after taking his punch head on. Bang! Rumble! Amara's body crashed against one of the walls of the laboratory, and without the protection of the formation, the wall instantly collapsed. Rumble! The roof of the laboratory started to shake, and cracks appeared all over it. 
The ground of the laboratory was sinking, and the entire underground labyrinth was collapsing. Evan didn't stop after punching Amaro and went towards her once again. While going towards her, he used the skill of Stone Buffalo and created a hammer of stone. Amaro was trying to stand up while ignoring the pain. When she suddenly felt something coming towards her, she barely lifted her head to look ahead when a stone hammer came flying towards her and struck the side of her head. Crack. Roll. The scales covering her head shattered and blood spurted out as she was blasted away. While she was still flying away after getting struck by the hammer, Evan suddenly appeared right beside her, holding another hammer in his hands. Die he shouted out loud and smashed the stone hammer that was in his hand right at her face. Crack. Boom. Rumble. Amara's skull was cracked open because of the attack of the stone hammer, and she crashed down to the ground of the laboratory. Because of the impact of her crash, a large part of the laboratory collapsed. After crashing down, Amara lay on the broken ground with her beastly eyes wide open. She was breathing heavily, and a puddle of blood was forming under her. Her triangular-shaped face was already twisted because of the impact of the hammer, and her life aura was very weak. Even with the help of her regeneration skill, it was hard for her to heal such serious injuries. Evan landed beside her and looked at the timer. When he looked at the timer, he saw he only had 1 minute and 20 seconds left before the shadow possession effect ended. When Amara saw Evan, she opened her mouth and tried to form a golden fireball. Evan sneered when he saw this and lifted one of his hands. Just as he lifted his hand, tens of stone spears formed around him. Goodbye, he said and slashed down his hand. Just as he slashed down, all the stone spears pierced Amara's body. Her mouth, heart, brain, lungs, every critical part of her body, were pierced by stone spears because Evan did not want to give her any chance. After a few seconds of being pierced by the stone spears, Amara's life force completely disappeared. She is also not coming back to life. Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw Amara's soul orb floating above her body, which meant she was dead. Looks like only Sarah has the ability to stay alive even after losing her head, Evan muttered, and quickly put away Amara's body inside his shadow storage. Rumble. Suddenly two more walls of the laboratory collapsed, and its roof started to fall down. Damn, I need to get out of here. Evan looked at the timer, and saw he only had one minute remaining. Without thinking about anything else, he immediately rushed towards the elevator after putting away Amara's body. Chapter 537 When Evan reached the front of the elevator, he saw it had already collapsed. He was already expecting something like this, so he was not flustered after seeing this. He grabbed the elevator and used his high strength to pull out the entire elevator, opening the way to the top. Rumble. The laboratory shook when he pulled out the elevator, and the ground of the entire laboratory sank. Evan was also trapped in the sinking of the ground, and had to use wind manipulation and shadow wings to maintain his balance. After regaining his balance, he immediately went inside the elevator opening and tapped his foot on the ground. As soon as he tapped his foot, Stone Buffalo's skill activated and a stone pillar came out of the ground, carrying him upward. Rumble. While he was going upward, suddenly the upper part of the elevator roof collapsed, and large stones started to fall down towards him. Damn Evan summoned Adam from his shadow storage when he saw the large stones, and immediately asked him to use gravity manipulation skill. Using the gravity manipulation skill, Adam reduced the weight and falling speed of the stones, and Evan was able to stop them using his wind manipulation skill. Soon with Adam's help, Evan successfully reached the top. When he reached at the top and left the elevator space, he saw the entire ungrounded city that was on the floor already turned into dust, and the ground was sinking from everywhere. The ceiling of the underground city was collapsing, and large boulders the size of the car were falling down. Rumble. F.U. Asterisk K. I hope Astronax is holding up Evan's heartbeat quickened when he saw the large boulders that were falling down, and he immediately flew towards the teleportation formation. While flying, he created tens of stone spears that were spinning like drills, and shot them towards the large boulders that were falling, in order to slow down the destruction of the labyrinth. Bang, bang, bang. Stone spears flew inside the collapsing labyrinth like missiles, and destroyed all the boulders that were falling down. Soon Evan saw Astronox who was standing near the teleportation formation with a steel pole in his hands. His entire body was releasing a deep red aura, 
and he was swinging the steel pole that was in hand near the formation, destroying all the falling boulders. He was forced to use his skill Berserk. Ha, huh? Evan muttered when he saw the deep red aura that was coming out from Astronox's body. Soon he reached in front of the formation and summoned back Astronox. He stepped inside the formation and activated it. As he was being teleported away, Evan looked at the timer of shadow possession. Just 50 seconds left Evan thought and narrowed his eyes. I won't be able to control the earthquake skill after losing Stony's power. I need to hurry or the formation Necros is protecting may collapse. When Evan appeared at the upper labyrinth, his footsteps halted. He looked ahead and saw the entire roof of the upper labyrinth had already collapsed, and the way to going towards Necros was blocked. Just 40 seconds Evan looked at the timer and took a deep breath. Suddenly his eyes flashed with white light, and a giant stone drill that was spinning, rapidly started to form in front of him. Go! Bang! He waved his hand and the drill shot forward, making a clear path to move ahead. Evan followed the path made by the drill, and rushed towards the formation. It should be here while moving forward, he suddenly stopped and changed the direction of the drill. Bang! The wall that was on his right side was torn apart and a warehouse that was slowing sinking, appeared in front of him. This was not the warehouse where the teleportation formation was located, but a different one. It's good I scouted this place earlier when that guy was bringing us to the lower labyrinth, Evan muttered, as he looked at tens of different kinds of weapons, that were scattered inside the warehouse. Earlier, when Kevin was bringing him to the lower labyrinth, Evan noticed this warehouse with his spiritual senses. This warehouse was filled with different kinds of weapon artifacts that ranged from C rank to A rank. Although the quality of these artifacts was not good, Evan decided to take them with him so that he could equip his shadow undeads. Currently, only his main shadow undeads like Elijah, Necros, Adam and others have their own weapon artifacts. He still needs to provide weapons for his other shadow undeads. He used shadow storage and quickly put away all the weapons that were inside the warehouse. After putting away the weapons, he used the stone drill to tear open the wall, and rush to the next warehouse. The next warehouse was filled with different kinds of potions, and Evan even noticed five bottles of golden potion, that Amara used earlier to heal herself. In total, there were at least 20 different kinds of potions in the warehouse. He did not check the details of any potions, and just put them in his shadow storage. After putting them away, he finally rushed towards the warehouse where Necros was. When he destroyed the wall of the warehouse where Necros was and went inside, he only had three seconds left. He saw Necros standing inside the teleportation formation with Rowan and others. He was using his mace and was destroying all the boulders that were falling toward the formation. Evan sighed in relief after seeing the formation was still intact and shot forward. One second Evan looked at the timer and used his agility to the fullest. Crack! Suddenly the ground beneath him sank and he lost his balance. The timer for shadow possession ended, and the entire warehouse started to collapse. Damn, Evan shouted as he returned to his normal appearance. Rumble. The ground around the teleportation formation which was fine till now, started to crack the moment the timer of the shadow possession ended. Just before the ground beneath Evan's feet completely sank, he pressed his feet and jumped toward the formation, successfully arriving inside it. Whoosh. The moment his feet touched the ground, the teleportation formation lit up, and he disappeared along with Necros and others. Chapter 538 after leaving the underground labyrinth, Evan rendered Rowan and the others unconscious, and sent them away with two wyverns, because he was too lazy to answer their questions, such as who was he, where were they, and so on. He asked the wyverns to drop them near the city gate, where they could be found by the city guards who patrol around the city. After sending them away, he walked out of the mangrove forest where the teleportation formation was located, and sat down against a tree. After sitting down he used shadow senses and contacted Hana who was waiting for him with Cedric, and asked her to come and pick him up. They should be here in half an hour. Evan muttered after talking with Hana. He closed his eyes and sighed lightly. I almost died because of those shitty formations. Just thinking about hundreds of attack formations that were releasing attacks comparable to A plus rank hunters, made his heart skip a beat. But when he thought about the rewards that he got after the fight, his lips curled up slightly. Now the person who can make those formations will work for me, Evan opened his eyes and said in a delightful voice thinking about Amara. 
whom he wanted to turn into his shadow undead. He waved his hand and the bodies of Amara and Volak came out from his shadow storage. Volak was missing his head while Amara's body was punctured by stone spears from all over the place. All in all, the condition of their bodies was not good. Looks like I will need to pump a large amount of soul while turning them into shadow undeads. Evan said while rubbing his chin after seeing the condition of their bodies. Suddenly his eyes fell on the soul orbs that were floating above their bodies. Amara's soul orb was normal and looked like a multicolored soul orb, but Volak's soul orb was still half black and half multicolored. Evan was confused seeing the difference in their soul orb. Previously, he had thought that Volak's soul orb was different from the others, because Amara had fused him with a monster. But now after seeing Amara's soul orb, he could confirm that was not the case. If Volak's soul orb was different due to fusing with a monster, then Amara's soul orb should also be different, because she had also fused herself with an S-rank Iguanox. Just what is going on here, Evan muttered and used soul absorption skill to bring their soul orbs closer to him. He didn't absorb them and just looked at them after bringing them closer. He tried to touch Amara's soul orb with a finger, but his finger passed through it. But the moment his finger passed through it, an image of a monster that looked exactly like Amara after her transformation came into his mind. This underscore Evan's eyes widened when he saw this, and a possibility suddenly came into his mind. He pushed back Amara's soul orb, and brought Volak's soul orb closer to him. Just like before, he used his finger to touch the multicolored part of Volak's soul orb. When his finger came into contact with Volak's multicolored soul orb, it passed through it, just like what happened with Amara's soul orb. When his finger passed through the multicolored part of the soul orb, an image of a man who looked to be in his mid-thirties appeared in his mind. The man had a painful expression on his face, and he was continuously screaming something. Evan narrowed his eyes when he saw this, and touched the black part of the soul orb. When his finger passed through the black part of the soul orb, the image of a monster that was around 4 meters tall, came into his mind. The monster was very lean, almost looking like a skeleton. His skin was pale and a shen, giving it a ghastly appearance. Its bony fingers were quite long, and claw-like nails were coming out from them. A mane of sleek, dark, and wispy hair was flowing down from the crown of its head, accentuating its eerie appearance. The monster also had a painful expression on its face just like Volak, and it was also screaming something. It's a shade stalker. Evan muttered after seeing the appearance of the monster that appeared in his mind. Just like Iguanox, a shade stalker is also a very rare monster that can't be found easily. It seems the fusion between Volak and Shade Stalker is incomplete, which is why his soul orb is different than Amara's. As Evan looked at Volak's soul orb, he felt a strange feeling rising within his heart. He tried to use soul absorption skill to fuse the black part and the multicolored part of Volak's soul orb, but it was completely useless. Using soul absorption, he could only move the soul orbs around him but he could not control them. Should I use Shadow Resurrection on him? Evan muttered after seeing he was not able to fuse them. But he shook his head after some time, because he knew the Shadow Resurrection would just create two different Shadow Undeads. Instead of merging them, the Shadow Resurrection skill would simply separate their souls, and the feeling in his heart was urging him to merge them. He tried to use his spiritual power to wrap around the soul orb and fuse them. But the moment his spiritual power came into contact with the soul orb, he immediately stopped because he felt his spiritual power would destroy the soul orb. Even the spiritual power that affects the souls is not working, Evan said to himself, after seeing even his spiritual power was not working. Just as he was thinking about what he should do, an idea came into his mind. He pointed one of his fingers towards Volak's soul orb, and used his shadow energy. The shadow energy that was inside his monarch core moved, and soon small black wisps of energy came out from the tip of his finger, and he guided the wisps of the shadow energy towards the soul orb. In the beginning, nothing strange happened even after he wrapped the shadow energy around the soul orb. But after a few seconds, Evan noticed the soul orb started to absorb his shadow energy. His expression changed when he felt this and he started to pour more shadow energy inside the soul orb. Volak's soul orb turned into a black hole, and in just a few seconds it absorbed 70% of his shadow energy. 
Damn, just what is happening? Evan was startled because of how much energy the soul orb was absorbing. Just when he was thinking about stopping, Evan suddenly felt a connection with the soul orb and felt he could now control Volak's soul orb. Evan's eyes lit up when he felt he could control the soul orb, and he immediately tried to fuse Volak's soul and Shadestalker's soul. The moment he thought about fusing them, he felt the ego of both Volak and Shadestalker. I need to choose whose ego I want to preserve, while fusing them Evan thought inwardly, when he felt the ego of Volak and Shadestalker. He chose to preserve Volak's ego, and just as he chose Volak's ego, the multicolored part of the soul orb engulfed the black part. A bright light flashed in front of Evan's eyes, and the black part of Volak's soul orb disappeared. The moment the black part disappeared, a notification came before Evan's eyes. You have unlocked the class-specific skill of the Shadow Necromancer Soul Fusion. Chapter 539 You have unlocked class-specific skill of the Shadow Necromancer Soul Fusion. Evan looked at the notification and blinked a few times. Then slowly his eyes opened wide, and a stunned expression appeared on his face. A new class-specific skill. Evan muttered in a shocked voice, not believing he received a new skill without doing anything. He surpassed the excitement that he was feeling and quickly looked at the details of the skill. Soul Fusion. Ash, using this skill you can use two souls as a base, and merge them into a new soul. That will have the qualities of both of the souls you used as a base. You can use Soul Fusion skill once every seven days. The description of the skill was very simple, but Evan's heart started to beat like a drum. After reading the details of the skill, just the notion of merging two souls into one that will have the qualities of both of the souls was simply mind-blowing. For example, if he merges the soul of a fire-type monster and an ice-type monster, he will be able to create a soul that will be able to control both fire and ice. And this was just the most basic example. The possibilities with this skill were endless. In the future, if he kills someone who has the power of the space element and someone who has the power of the time element, he will be able to create a soul that will be able to control the power of space-time. Stop stop. Evan lightly slapped himself and stopped his imagination that was running wild. I don't even know how this skill works. And I'm already thinking about creating souls that will control the power of space-time. Evan said to himself and took a deep breath. The description of the skill was very vague, and there were many uncertain things about it. Like what can he do with the souls after merging them? Can he turn them into shadow undeads? If yes, then what about the body? To create a new soul he would need to use two souls as a base, and to turn that soul into a shadow undead, he would need the body of a monster. But the question was, whose body would he use to create the shadow undead? The soul that will come out after fusion, will be completely different from the two base souls. There were other questions as well like, can he merge the souls he has absorbed using the soul absorption skill? Or he can only merge souls that he has not absorbed using the soul absorption skill? Evan took a deep breath as many questions appeared inside his mind. There is still some time until Hana and Cedric get here. I should test the effect of this skill. Until then Evan muttered and tried to use the soul fusion skill. But just as he tried to use the skill, he found a problem. I can't use the skill. Evan muttered and looked at his status window. When he looked at the status window, he saw the soul fusion skill was on cooldown. And he needed to wait for 6 days 23 hours and 58 minutes. Before he could use it again. Looks like the skill went on cooldown because I merged Volak's soul earlier. Evan muttered and shook his head. He looked at Volak's soul orb and shrugged his shoulders. Well... Although I cannot test everything I can still do a few things with this merged soul. Evan used his finger and tried to touch Volak's soul orb. This time when his finger passed through the soul orb. The image that came into his mind was a strange monster that was looking like a combination of a human and shade stalker. The monster was around two and a half meters tall with a lean body that looked very agile. His face was very thin, almost looking like a skeleton skull and his skin was pale and a shen. His hands were in the shape of claws with long sharp looking nails. Long white hairs were flowing down from the crown of his head giving him an eerie appearance. All in all, in Evan's eyes, the appearance of this monster can definitely scare the sh asterisk t out of an two year old child. So after merging, it turned into a humanoid monster. Evan said while rubbing his chin, doesn't it mean I can merge a human and a wolf soul, and create a werewolf? Evan's eyes lit up when he thought about it. 
and his imagination once again started to run wild as he thought about making different kinds of abominations using soul fusion. I wonder what will happen if I merge the soul of a goblin with a dragon. Will I be able to create a goblin dragon? Evan said out loud, imagine the combination of a goblin and a dragon. But he soon shook his head, after remembering there are no dragons in Aurora World. After taking a look at Soul Orb, he did some other tests as well. He tried to absorb the merged Soul Orb using the Soul Absorption skill. But for some reason, he was not able to absorb the merged Soul Orb like the other Soul Orbs. When he tried to use the Shadow Resurrection skill, he found that in order to turn the merged Soul Orb into a Shadow Undead, he needed the body of the monster whose ego he had preserved, while merging the two base Soul Orbs. I am glad that I preserved Volak's ego instead of Shade Stalker's ego, while merging their Soul Orbs otherwise. Evan muttered and wiped out the imaginary sweat from his forehead. Just thinking about the fact that he would have lost an s rank Shadow Undead, if he had preserved Shade, Stalker's ego made his heart skip a beat. I want to test some other things as well. But it will have to wait as the skill is on cooldown Evan muttered, and decided to turn Volak into a Shadow Undead. Just as he was about to activate Shadow Resurrection, he received a message from Kazul, and his expression changed. Chapter 540 Screech A shrill screech of a bat that was 8 meters tall and had a wingspan of 20 meters, echoed throughout Nathlium City and the buildings and houses that were burning in a fire, started to collapse. The bat was purple in color, and was releasing the aura of an A-plus rank monster. Boom. Boom. The entire city was in chaos, and amid the collapsing buildings and houses, the dead bodies of hunters could be seen everywhere. The monsters were roaming everywhere in the city, and were destroying everything that came into their paths. The A-plus rank bat that was hovering above the city, opened its mouth once again, wanting to release another attack to destroy the buildings and houses. But before it could screech out, a black light flashed, and its head was severed. A fountain of blood erupted in mid-air, and the body of the giant bat started to fall down from the sky. Kazel appeared at the place where the bat was a moment ago, and looked at the burning city with his cold purple eyes. He was missing his left arm, and there were deep wounds all over his body. Bujon. Suddenly he heard the sound of a loud explosion and looked in its direction. When he looked in the direction of the explosion, he felt the auras of five S rankers. Among the five, three auras belonged to humans, while two belonged to monsters. Kazel's purple eyes burned with anger when he looked in the direction of the S rankers, but he didn't move towards them. He looked down and saw Sophie and Caleb retreating back with some other hunters. The faces of all the hunters were pale, and all of them were injured to some extent. Just an hour ago everything was going well, and most of the monsters that came out due to the dungeon outbreaks were killed by hunters. Just when the city was about to return to normal, the Dark Guild launched a sudden attack that caught everyone off guard. There were three s rank monsters along with their subordinates that launched the sudden attack, and the person leading the three s rank monsters was none other than Damien. The three s rank monsters were Golden Lion, Sonic Bat and Lightning Horse. The hunters were already exhausted after fighting against the monsters for a few days. So when the sudden attack was launched, the defense barrier of the city was not able to handle it, and Damien and the other monsters successfully entered the city. Including Damien, there were four S-rankers that launched the attack along with thousands of monsters. So there was no way that the hunters who were already exhausted could fight against them. In just half an hour after the sudden attack, more than half of the city was destroyed and thousands of hunters lost their lives. Nathan and Ron who were the only S-ranker, couldn't do anything because they were stopped by Damien, Lightning Horse and Sonic Bat. While Nathan and Ron were fighting against Damien and the other two S-rank monsters, the Golden Lion went ahead and started to kill other hunters. When the monsters once again flooded the city, the hunters tried to retreat towards the bases that were built all over the city because of the dungeon outbreaks. Sophie, Mark and others were the same, and they also tried to retreat towards one of the bases. But because of the sudden attack and the large number of monsters, their retreat path was not smooth. The worst thing was that the Golden Lion who separated from other S-rank monsters appeared in their area. When the Golden Lion attacked Sophie's group, Kazel fought against it. The Golden Lion was caught off guard when Kazel attacked it, because it did not expect to encounter an S-rank hunter. But it composed itself quickly, 
and ordered the monster army that followed it to kill the hunters who were retreating. While it fought against Kazal, Evan ordered Kazal to protect Sophie and others when he sent him with them, so Kazal did not care about anything, and fought against the Golden Lion, while exchanging serious injuries. The Golden Lion was stunned because of the reckless fighting style of Kazal. In just a few minutes after the fight started, Kazal lost one of his arms, but he also seriously injured the Golden Lion. The Golden Lion was scared because of the way Kazal was fighting without caring about anything, so it ran away after receiving a serious injury. When the Golden Lion ran away, Kazal did not chase it, because his main objective was to protect Sophie and others, so he immediately went towards them after the golden lion ran away. But when he reached there, David and Mark were already killed by the monsters that came with golden lion. Only Sophie, Caleb and a few other hunters were left in the group that was retreating. Kazal was angry beyond belief after seeing Mark and David were dead, and felt he failed the mission that was given to him by Evan. In anger, he killed all the monsters that were chasing after Sophie and others. But it changed nothing as Mark and David were already dead. Master I am sore underscore. It's not your fault, so don't worry about it. Kazal was about to apologize after telling everything, but Evan stopped him midway. After hearing everything from Kazal he could already tell it was not his fault that David and Mark died. What should I do now master? Kazal asked after Evan stopped him from apologizing. Evan was silent for a moment after hearing Kazal. He thought about everything for a moment before he replied to him. Just protect Sophie and Caleb for the time being. I will be there by tomorrow. Kazal was stunned for a moment when he heard Evan was coming there, but he quickly came back to his senses. By the way, suddenly he heard Evan's voice again. What happened to the bodies of David and Mark? When I reached there both of them were already eaten by the monsters. Exclamation point I see Evan replied after a moment of silence. Just protect Sophie and Caleb. I will be there by tomorrow. Understood Master Kazal replied, and Evan stopped using shadow senses. Chapter 541 Evan felt extremely complicated after he stopped using shadow senses. Although he always keeps his distance from everyone because of the strange feeling that he feels whenever he tries to get close to someone. He would be lying if he said he didn't feel angry after knowing David and Mark were dead. But along with the anger, there was another feeling as well that was constantly telling him what Mark and David's deaths had to do with him. It was like something was trying to affect his emotions, so that he wouldn't feel anything after knowing Mark and David were dead. The anger he was feeling was gradually turning into a cold emotion, as it had been when he had seen the dead bodies of the Terror Brothers. When his emotions were affected after seeing the dead bodies of the Terror Brothers, he did not feel anything strange. But this time things were completely different. Evan's current spiritual power was way higher than before, so he could feel that there was something deep within his soul that was affecting his emotions. What the hell is wrong with me? Evan was terrified when he felt there was something that was affecting his emotions. From the moment his emotions were affected after seeing the dead bodies of the Terror Brothers, Evan knew there was something wrong with him. After all, he still remembers how the anger he felt after knowing about Terror Brothers' death completely disappeared without any reason. Evan tried to think about the reason why the anger he felt that time completely disappeared many times and why he stopped caring about them like they were completely strangers, and their deaths had nothing to do with him. But he was never able to find anything. But currently, he can feel there was something deep within his soul that was affecting his emotions. He used his spiritual power to scan his soul, but he didn't find anything strange. Although he did not find anything strange, he could feel that his emotions were still being affected. And the anger and the sadness that he felt after knowing about Mark's and David's death was disappearing, turning into cold emotion. Evan was even more scared after knowing his emotions were still being affected. Don't mess with me you f you asterisk cur. Suddenly he used shadow energy and tried to cover his soul. As soon as he covered his soul with shadow energy, he felt that his emotions were no longer being affected. Evan's eyes lit up when he felt his emotions were no longer being affected. But the next second his expression changed as he felt a strange power start to gather deep within his soul. The power was like boiling magma that wanted to destroy the layer of shadow energy that he used to cover his soul. Arg a painful grunt escaped from Evan's mouth as his soul was lightly damaged because of the boiling power that was gathering inside it. F u asterisk k Evan used even more shadow energy to cover his soul. But because of using soul fusion earlier, 
there was a very low amount of shadow energy inside his monarch core. Without caring about the consumption, he used all of his remaining shadow energy to cover his soul, emptying his monarch core from the shadow energy. For the first few seconds, everything was fine. But slowly Evan started to feel his soul started to shake. The energy that was gathering deep inside his soul was boiling, and the layers of shadow energy that were covering his soul were slowly breaking apart. Evan started to breathe heavily, and cold sweat appeared all over his body. As the energy was boiling inside his soul, Evan started to feel deep hatred towards it. He didn't know what was happening, but he felt he was looking at his worst enemy. Bang! Damn, suddenly one of the layers of shadow energy that was covering his soul was torn apart, and Evan felt a stinging pain. His soul was once again damaged. But even after knowing his soul was being damaged, Evan didn't stop and continued to try to stop the boiling energy. The more Evan thought about the thing that was affecting his emotions, the more hatred he started to feel towards it. Bang! Another layer of shadow energy was torn apart, and Evan's soul was once again damaged. He started feeling dizzy, and the pain he was feeling was nothing to scoff at. There was no shadow energy in Evan's monarch core, so he tried to use world essence to cover his soul. But the world essence was completely useless. The moment it came into contact with the boiling energy, it disappeared without being able to resist even for a moment. Evan was shocked when he saw this because he thought the world essence was almost as powerful as his shadow energy. This sh asterisk tie world essence. Evan couldn't help but curse the useless world essence. Bang. C o u g h asterisk. Another layer of shadow energy that was covering his soul was destroyed, and he coughed out a mouthful of blood. The damage to his soul increased even more. Evan's head started to spin, and his breathing became heavy. Suddenly the boiling energy deep within his soul started to move with even more force. All the shadow energy that was covering his soul started to get destroyed by the boiling energy. Just what the fu asterisk k is this thing? Evan gritted his teeth and tried to resist, but his efforts were futile. All the boiling energy gathered at a single spot and the next second. Bang! All the layers of shadow energy were instantly destroyed. Arg a painful scream escaped Evan's mouth as his soul was badly damaged by the burst of boiling energy. His eyes rolled back inside his head and he fell to the ground with blood leaking from the corner of his mouth. Just before Evan lost consciousness, he saw a notification flashing before his eyes. Your title The Cursed One is reacting. Chapter 542 The night breeze was flowing within the wilderness and the sky was filled with bright stars. Although it was night time, the time when the predators of the wilderness came out to hunt, the entire wilderness was still completely silent, and no monster could be seen walking around in the wilderness. All the monsters were hiding inside their lairs, and were looking in a certain direction with horror-filled eyes. In the direction they were looking, Evan was lying unconscious under a giant tree. All of his shadow undeads created a circle around him, and were releasing their powerful aura throughout the wilderness. The aura of so many monsters that were S rank and A plus rank was enough to scare all the monsters. After Evan lost consciousness, all his shadow undeads came out from his shadow storage on their own, so that no monsters could hurt him while he was unconscious. If not for the fact that they were deep within the wilderness, very far away from Ravenhurst city, they would have already caused a mass panic inside the city, because of their high rank in numbers. Suddenly Evan's body trembled a little, and he slowly opened his eyes. When Evan opened his eyes, they were filled with coldness, and his black eyes were looking like a deep abyss. A momentary flash of confusion flashed in Evan's cold eyes, but he soon remembered what had happened before he lost consciousness. He tried to stand up, but just as he tried to stand up, a sharp pain came from deep within his soul. F asterisk CK Evan almost lost consciousness once again when he felt the sharp pain coming from his soul. Cold sweat appeared all over his body, and he once again lay down on the ground. He took a few deep breaths to adjust to the pain he was feeling, and used his spiritual senses to look at the condition of his soul. When he looked at the condition of his soul, Evan couldn't help but sigh out loud. Around 8% of my soul is damaged. He muttered and opened his eyes. 8% may not seem like much, but soul injury is completely different from physical injury. Due to the 8% damage done to his soul, Evan may have lost approximately 20% of his power. If he does not take a potion that can heal his soul, the injury to his soul will take at least a year or two to heal on its own. 
But even after knowing about his injured soul, Evan was thinking about a completely different matter. I am not feeling anything. He muttered with a bitter smile on his face when he thought about David and Mark's death. Currently, his feelings towards their death was completely different from before. If before he felt anger and sadness after knowing about their death, now his emotions were completely neutral. No matter how much he thought about their death, there were no fluctuations in his emotions. He stared at the night sky with a dazed look on his face, not knowing what he should do now. Suddenly he remembered the notification that he had seen just before losing consciousness. He opened his status window and looked at his title section. Titles. Rule Breaker, Ruler of the Shadow Realm, The Cursed One. The question marks from his title section disappeared, and he was finally able to see the title that was hidden all this time. The moment Evan's eyes fell on the last title, for some reason he felt a deep hatred rising within his heart. He took a deep breath to control his anger and focused on the title. The Cursed One to look for its details. The Cursed One dash. Evan. Dot. Ha 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 suddenly Evan burst into laughter and sat up, completely ignoring the pain in his soul. That could have driven anyone crazy. Although he was laughing, all of Evan's shadow undeads and the monsters who heard his laughter felt a chill running down their spine. All of them could feel the deep anger and hatred that was hidden within his loud laughter. I swear one day I will definitely tear apart that chicken nugget person who is responsible for showing the details. Evan shouted out loud while looking at the dark sky. He took out a high-level healing potion and drank it. He felt a refreshing feeling spreading all over his body. But the feeling didn't last long, because the pain that was coming from his soul couldn't be healed by a normal potion. F.U. Asterisk K my life. Evan cursed loudly and took out all the potions that he had stolen from Amara's warehouse. All the potions that he stole from her warehouse were of high level and had different kinds of effects. But there was no potion in them that could heal his soul. Evan once again cursed after seeing there was no option that could heal his soul and stood up. When he stood up, he saw Hana and Cedric were also standing with his shadow undeads. Just how long was I unconscious for? Evan raised an eyebrow and looked at the time on his phone. Six hours, huh? He shook his head after seeing the time and decided to leave from Pallium City. Before leaving, he looked at Cedric and thought about what he should do with him. Wait a second. Suddenly he thought about something and looked at the details of one of his skills. Energy devouring? Unique skill. Ash upon using this skill you can summon devouring thorn vines that can devour life force, stamina or other types of energies from living or dead beings, creatures or objects. The user can use the devoured energy to heal himself, refill his mana, recover stamina, or increase the rank of his core. I have never used the energy devouring skill for healing. Can I heal my soul using it? Evan muttered and looked at Cedric coldly. He opened one of his palms towards him and activated the energy devouring skill. Vines filled with thorns came out from his palm and pierced Cedric's body. Because he was under Hana's control, Cedric did not resist one bit and his body started to turn into a dry husk. Evan ignored Cedric who was dying and guided the energy the devouring vines were giving him towards his soul. Soon the energy reached his soul, and his soul started to absorb it. Evan's eyes lit up when his soul started to absorb energy, because he could feel the energy was slowly healing his soul. In just one minute, Cedric's body turned into dust, and all of his energy was absorbed by Evan's soul. Evan looked at the condition of his soul after absorbing all the energy, and a deep frown appeared on his face. The energy provided by an A-plus rank hunter, just healed my soul by 0.2%. Evan muttered in a low voice, feeling shocked. But when he thought about his soul which was far more powerful than any other S-rank hunter, he calmed down and took a deep breath. Although it is not easy I can at least heal my soul using energy devouring skill. Evan muttered and summoned Ariel after putting away Sadurk's storage ring. Besides, he jumped at the back of Ariel. My next destination is the perfect place to heal my soul. Chapter 543 Damn it. I can't even sleep. Evan groaned in pain and took out the painkiller potion from his shadow storage. The pain in his soul was continuously increasing and he was going mad because of it. The pain he was feeling reduced a lot after taking painkiller potion, but its effect didn't last long. In just after 10 minutes he once again started to feel pain. I need something to distract myself, Evan muttered, feeling he would go insane if he didn't find anything to distract himself. 
It had been two hours since he left for the city of Nathlium, and these two hours were the worst torture of his life. Although he already knew that the injuries of souls were the most troublesome to deal with, he did not expect it to be so serious. He looked inside his shadow storage to find something to distract himself. I can't turn Amara and Volak into shadow undeads for the time being, as my shadow energy is still recovering. Evan said while looking at Amara and Volak's dead bodies. I have enough cores and bodies to push my prime core to S rank but. Evan furrowed his eyebrows thinking about the rank of his prime core. He wanted to advance his it to S rank, but he was hesitating because of his monarch core. His monarch core was still at A rank. And if the rank of his prime core exceeded his monarch core, his prime core would immediately become unstable. Until now he was able to increase the rank of his prime core without any worries. Because most of the time his monarch core was always ranked higher than his prime core. But currently, things are different. If he increases the rank of his prime core, it will reach S rank, surpassing the rank of his monarch core. The moment it surpasses the rank of his monarch core, his prime core will definitely become unstable. Just like what happened when it advanced to A rank. When his prime core reached A rank, his monarch core was at B rank. At that time his unstable A rank prime core didn't affect him much, but he couldn't be careless in his current condition. His soul is already damaged, and if he increases the rank of his prime core, he will have to deal with its instability while taking care of his damaged soul. Instead of prime core, I should focus on increasing the rank of monarch core first. Evan decided after some time and took out the body of an A-rank monster from his shadow storage. He used energy devouring on the body, and started to refine its energy through his monarch core. When Evan absorbed the energy through his monarch core, the pain he was feeling in his soul subsided slightly. Evan's eyes immediately lit up when the pain he was feeling decreased a little, and he sighed in relief. Although his soul was not healing as he was refining the energy through his monarch core instead of his soul, he still felt relieved that he could at least get rid of pain while absorbing the energy. As the pain he was feeling decreased while absorbing the energy, Evan took out Amara's storage ring. I think you should take a look at. While still absorbing the energy, he connected the ring with himself and looked inside it. When he looked inside the ring, his eyes shined like stars. Amara was not proficient in fighting. So there was no high class weapon or anything inside her ring. But the things that he saw were enough to make anyone drool. There were hundreds of high level potions and alchemy materials inside her ring. All the potions had different kinds of effects and could help him in a crucial moment. I will give back these alchemy materials to Amara after turning her into a shadow undead so that she can refine them for me. Evan muttered when he saw he was not able to recognize most of the herbs that were inside the ring. Other than potions, there were different kinds of crams as well. The charms that were inside Amara's ring were higher level than the charms that he found in Olivia's ring. Without any hesitation, he put away all the charms in his shadow storage. Although he did not use many of the charms that he got from Olivia because of his high power, he was not going to say no to free items. That might help him in a crucial moment. After charms, Evan found some research papers. But he did not bother to look at them. Instead of reading those papers, he decides to just ask Amara about her research after turning her into a shadow undead. There were many escape scrolls as well in her storage ring, and Evan happily put them away in his shadow storage as well. The most powerful escape scroll that he found in her storage ring could teleport him 3000 kilometers away in an instant. It's a good thing I got Sonic Bat's shadow undeads. That can prevent my enemies from using the escape scrolls. Evan muttered to himself after putting away the escape scrolls. There were some formation plates as well in the storage ring. But Evan was completely clueless about their usage. He put them away and decided to ask Amara about them later on. After the formation plates, Evan did not find anything useful in her storage ring. He was about to put away her ring when a strange purple colored formation plate that was different from other formation plates caught his eye. He took out the purple colored formation plate and its details appeared in front of him. Moon Howling Army Formation. Dot. Evan read the details of Moon Howling Army Formation and his eyes lit up. All of my shadow undeads are A plus rank and S rank. If they use this moon howling army formation. Evan said to himself and gulped down his saliva. I am sure even in my best condition. I will not be able to defeat them if they use this formation. Evan was very excited after seeing the details of the formation. And wanted to try it immediately. But he knew it was not the time for that. 
He put away Amara's storage ring and took out Volak's ring. He was still absorbing the bodies of the monsters using the energy devouring skill and was slowly increasing the rank of his Monarch Core. Time continued to pass by, and Evan's Monarch Core was steadily approaching S rank. Just like this, 20 hours passed by in a blink of an eye, and Evan was about to reach Nathlium City. Chapter 544 Why? F asterisk CK that bastard. If I catch him, I'll definitely cut off his DI asterisk K. A man wearing tattered green armor said in a furious tone. The man was releasing the aura of an a plus rank hunter, and his eyes were bloodshot. The name of the man was Joseph, and he was the guild master of Roaring Lion, a gold rank guild of Nathlium City. Earlier, he and the members of his guild were taking care of the remaining monsters that came out because of the dungeon outbreaks, when Damien launched the sudden attack on the city along with the monsters. Because of the sudden attack of the new monsters, most of the members of his guilds were killed, and very few people were able to escape alive. When I heard the news I actually didn't believe it, but to think that guy really joined the Dark Guild. Another man who was at A plus rank, said while casting his healing skills on the wounded hunters around him. The name of the man was Peter, and he was the guild master of the Blessed Moon, another gold rank guild of Nathlium City. Currently, they were inside one of the camps that were built all over Nathlium City, and were trying to regroup with other hunters. Did you contact other A and A plus rank hunters? Joseph asked Peter after taking some deep breaths to calm down. When Peter heard Joseph, his expression sank and he nodded his head. I contacted them earlier. Mio, Cluck, Stephen and Claire were successfully able to escape from the monsters. But other than these four, no other A and A plus rank hunter is answering the call. Joseph's expression turned ugly upon hearing Peter, and he clenched his fist tightly. You mean they are? Joseph didn't finish his sentence, but Peter already knew what he wanted to ask. He sighed heavily and looked at him. I'm not sure, but since they are not responding their chances of survival are not very high. Damn it, Joseph cursed under his breath, and a look of despair flashed inside his eyes. What about Nathan and Ron? He tried to surpass the fear that he started to feel and ask without much hope. He knew that Ron and Nathan were being attacked by 3S rankers, so he was not very optimistic about their situation. According to the last report that I received, Ron and Nathan successfully retreated after fighting against Damien and the other s rank monsters. A hopeful glint shone in Joseph's eyes when he heard Nathan and Ron were successfully able to retreat but that glint soon disappeared when he heard Peter's next words. But the price they paid was not small. From what I know, Nathan was seriously injured, and there is a strong possibility that he will not be able to fight against the S-Rankers in a short period of time. Joseph's eyes opened wide when he heard Peter, and he asked in a trembling voice, Doesn't this mean that currently there is no one in the city who can stop Damien and other S-Rankers? Yes, Peter nodded and said in a heavy voice, we should be fine for the time being, as our camp is at the end of the city, and it will take quite some time for the monsters to get here. We can just hope that help from other cities will arrive soon, and we will be able to survive. Peter said and gestured to one of the hunters who was standing there to take away the hunters he had just healed. Joseph's expressions didn't relax even after hearing Peter. As one of the people who escaped from the monsters, he knew how dire the situation was. If Nathan and Ron were not stopping Damien and other s rank monsters, he was sure that they would increase the speed of conquering the city, so that they would be able to take full control of it before the reinforcements from the other cities came here. While Joseph was thinking about their situation, a b plus rank hunter came running towards them. I think you should take a look at. Guildmaster, it's not good. The b plus rank stopped in front of Peter and said in a voice filled with urgency. Peter's heart skipped a beat when he saw the grave expression on Hunter's face, and he asked in a careful voice, What's wrong? The B plus rank Hunter gulped down his saliva and said in a shaky voice, A large group of monsters is coming towards us. What? Peter's eyes opened wide when he heard the Hunter, and he quickly bolted out from the camp. Joseph was also stunned, and he followed after Peter. After coming out when Peter and Joseph looked into the distance, their eyes flashed with despair, and they subconsciously took a step back because of fear. What is this lighting horse doing here? Peter muttered in a shocked filled voice, as he looked at S-rank lighting horse, that was leading the monster army. There were at least 10,000 monsters in the army and among them, around 5 monsters were A-plus rank. 
We are doomed, Joseph said in a helpless voice and sighed out loud. Although he already expected that the monsters would increase their pace to conquer the city after Nathan was seriously injured, he did not expect them to be so fast. Since it comes to this, Joseph's eyes flashed with resolution, and he looked at the hunters who were present in the camp. All of you stop spacing out and activate the camp formations. Don't tell me you all want to die a dog's death without even putting up a fight. Joseph shouted out loud and stepped forward, standing in front of the camp. Peter came back to his senses after hearing Josper's shout and took a deep breath. He also ordered the members of his guild to prepare for the fight. Although all of them were scared and knew the chances of their survival were close to none, they still stepped forward, knowing they had no other choice. Just when they were getting ready for the death battle, another B-plus rank hunter came running towards them. Guildmaster, another monster army is coming towards us. What? Peter and Joseph were completely stunned when they heard the hunter. But the hunter who just came was still not finished. Moreover, this monster army is even bigger than the monster army of the lightning horse. And there seem to be at least two s rank monsters in this army. Two more s rank monsters. A look of disbelief appeared on Peter and Joseph's face, and they immediately thought about Golden Lion and Sonic Bat. Why are all three s rank monsters coming here? Peter muttered in a despair-filled voice and dropped to the ground. Fighting against one s rank monster was already a disaster for them, but knowing two more s rank monsters were coming towards them, they lost all hope of survival. Soon all of them felt the auras of thousands of monsters that were coming towards them. It was night time so they were not able to see clearly. But as Joseph and others looked in the opposite direction of the army of lightning horse, they could see the purple burning eyes of the monsters that were coming towards them. At a glance, there were at least 10,000 monsters, and the monsters who were in front were releasing the auras of s rank monsters. Chapter 545 When Evan was a few thousand kilometers away from the city of Naphlium, he contacted Kazel through shadow senses. Since Kazel had been staying near the camp where Sophie and Caleb were this whole time, he was unclear about the situation in the other camps of the city. Evan just got general information from him. Like monsters were still roaming all over the city, and hunters were still trying their best to stop them. However, according to Kazel, the situation of the hunters was not looking good. In the past 20 hours, there had been four attacks on the camp Kazel was protecting, and the attacks of monsters becoming more and more aggressive. But since there was no S rank monster in the group of the monsters that attacked camp, Kazel was able to handle them without much problem. Moreover, there were two A plus rank hunters in the camp he was protecting, and they were also doing a great job killing monsters, along with other hunters who were present in the camp. After getting all the information from Kazel, Evan felt a little troubled. Although he was sure he could wipe out all the monsters that were flooding Naphlium City, with the help of the shadow undeads that he brought with him, he was troubled because the monsters were scattered all over the city. He only brought around 100 shadow undeads with him, and the rest of his shadow undeads were in the dungeons of a start city. If he decided to wipe out the monsters that were flooding the city with just 100 shadow undeads, it would surely take a long time as they couldn't cover the entire city. Seems like I will have to use that method. Evan muttered and released all of his shadow undeads from his shadow storage. While still flying towards the city, he gave a command to his shadow undeads and all of them scattered around. While his shadow undeads were completing the task that he gave them, Evan was still absorbing bodies of monsters using energy devouring skill. Time passed and three hours later he arrived just outside the city of Naphlium. Standing on Ariel's back, Evan looked at Naphlium city which was now looking like a ruined city. He took a deep breath and looked at his shadow undeads who were hovering around him. Release them. He said and the storage rings that his shadow undeads were wearing flashed. The next second, the ground outside of Naphlium city was filled with the dead bodies of the monsters. Evan closed his eyes and looked at the shadow energy inside his monarch core. In the last 24 hours, all of his shadow energy already recovered. After checking the shadow energy he opened his eyes and used shadow resurrection on all the monsters bodies that were brought by his undeads. In just 2 seconds, he lost around 30% of his shadow energy. But as a result, thousands of shadow undeads appeared before him. Most of the shadow undeads ranged from E rank to C rank. But among thousands of monsters, there were some that were A and A plus rank. 
Although these shadow undeads will only last for one hour since I can't save them, it should be fine. Evan muttered and used shadow storage to put away all the bodies that were scattered on the ground. Titan Elephant, Stone Buffalo, Aqua, Necros, Snow, Astronax, and a few others of his shadow undeads stood in front of the army, and Evan signaled them to march forward. As they entered the city, Evan didn't see any monsters around the area. According to Kazel, monster invaded the city from the north gate, and I am currently at the south gate, in the completely opposite direction. Evan muttered and ordered his shadow undeads to split up. He divided them into seven groups. In each group, there were 3,000 shadow undeads, except the seventh group which had 10,000 shadow undeads. He sent the six groups away to clean up the monsters, and asked the commanders of the groups to not forget to collect the bodies of the monsters. After killing them, as he was thinking about turning them into new shadow undeads, once the duration of one hour ran out. After the six groups left, Evan led the seventh group towards the center of the city. He was bringing so many shadow undeads with him because of his own personal safety. Although the pain he was feeling because of his damaged soul subsided a little as he was continuously using energy devouring, he was still having a hard time because of it. As he moved forward, Evan couldn't help but sigh. I can't even use my spiritual senses because of this damn injury. If his soul was perfectly fine, he could have easily scanned an area of around 50 kilometers with his spiritual senses to look for monsters. But because of his injured soul, he couldn't even activate his spiritual senses. Whenever he tries to use his spiritual senses, he feels a sharp pain from the depth of his soul. Just what kind of F.U. asterisk ked up title is this? Evan cursed loudly, thinking about the title that injured his soul. He continued to move forward, and after five minutes, he suddenly felt the aura of monsters and humans at some distance from him. There is even one S-rank monster among them. Evan narrowed his eyes when he felt the aura of an S-rank monster. He took out Volak and Amara's bodies from the shadow storage, and used shadow resurrection on them, while using a large number of souls as fuel, because of the condition of their bodies. Since his soul was damaged, Evan did not want to fight personally if possible, which is why he was turning Amara and Volak into shadow undeads. Just as he used shadow resurrection, Volak's shadow undead appeared in front of him. Just like what he had seen through the soul orb, Volak's shadow undead was around two and a half meters tall, with a lean body that looked very agile. His face was very thin, almost looking like a skeleton skull, and his skin was now completely black. His hands were in the shape of claws with long sharp looking nails. Long hairs were flowing down from the crown of his head, giving him an eerie appearance. The appearance of Volak's shadow undead was very eye-catching, but Evan completely ignored him because he was looking at Amara's dead body. His shadow resurrection did not fail, but there was another problem with Amara. Her soul did not completely merge with Iguanox. Evan muttered and put away her body after thinking about it for a moment. He ignored Amara's matter for the time being, and looked at Volak's shadow undead. Let's see how powerful the shadow undead created by soul fusion is. Chapter 546. Eclipse, Volak, Oli and Adam were in the lead of the shadow army that Evan brought with him. All of them marched forward while releasing their powerful aura without caring about anything. Joseph, Peter and other hunters were shocked when they saw the army of black monsters marching towards them. But their shock increased even more when they saw Lightning Horse, and the monster army brought by it was shaking in fear after seeing the army of shadow undeads. Just what kind of monsters are they? Peter muttered in a shocked voice after seeing even the lightning horse was shaking in fear, while looking at the army of black monsters. I thought it was the monster army brought by Golden Lion and Sonic Bat, but this. Joseph muttered in a dazed voice not understanding what was happening. He looked high in the sky and saw an A-plus ranked bird hovering above the army of black monsters. At the back of the A-plus ranked bird, he could vaguely see the figure of a man. Evan roughly looked at the number of monsters in the army of Lighting Horse and snorted in disdain. As someone who faced an army made of millions of monsters, he couldn't care less about an army that was made of just a few thousand monsters. Volak, take care of that horse. Oli, Adam, Eclipse lead others and finish the rest of the monsters. Evan gave quick orders to his shadow undeads as he had limited time. The lighting horse was already thinking about running away after seeing Volak and other monsters. Just from a single glance, 
It could detect the overwhelming hostility that the army of black monsters had towards it and its army. If it was just for lack, it might have thought about fighting before deciding what to do. But when it looked at the person who was sitting at the back of the A-plus rank bird, the lighting horse's instinct told it to run away immediately. I need to tell others about this strange group of monsters. The lightning horse thought inwardly and turned around, deciding to dash away from there. The thing that lightning horse was most proud of was definitely its agility. When it comes to speed, it was one of the fastest monsters. Purple lighting crackled around it, and in a blink of an eye, lightning horse was tens of kilometers away from the place it was standing. Evan raised an eyebrow when he saw the speed at which lightning horse was dashing away. But when he noticed Volak's location, he was left completely speechless. Quality of the Shade Stalker, I guess. Evan muttered and shook his head. In just five seconds, using one of its skills, the lighting horse was more than 100 kilometers away from the army of shadow undeads. It looked behind it while dashing away, and showed its long white teeth, after confirming no one was chasing after it. Just as the horse was feeling delighted that no one was chasing after it, all the hairs on its body stood up. The shadow of the lightning horse moved slightly, and two burning purple eyes opened in it. The lightning horse felt a cold glare and looked towards its shadow as it continued running. When lightning horse's yellow eyes met Volak's purple eyes, the world around it suddenly turned dark. All the destroyed buildings and burning houses of the city disappeared, and the lightning horse found itself inside a completely different world where it couldn't see anything. World of Darkness. The lightning horse heard a cold voice, and suddenly hundreds of black hands came out from the ground trying to capture it. The lightning horse felt its blood turn cold when it saw the black hands that were coming out from the ground, and it tried to fly away from there. But when it tried to fly away, a shocked expression appeared on lightning horse's face. It tried to use its mana, but found for some reason it couldn't use its mana. All of its skills were also sealed, and no matter how much it tried, the lightning horse was not able to use any of its skills. The black hands that came out from the ground captured lightning horse, and started to pull it inside the ground. The lightning horse screamed in horror, and tried to break free from the clutches of the black hands, that were pulling it into the ground. But all of its efforts were completely useless, because it was not able to use mana and its skills. The black hands successfully pulled the lightning horse into the ground, and the horse found itself floating into a black world. The world around the horse was completely dark, and it could not see anything. Suddenly, two purple burning eyes opened above the lightning horse. When lightning horse looked at those burning purple eyes, its expression became dazed, and it slowly started to lose its life force. While the lightning horse was in a dazed state, Volak appeared in front of it. Even though Volak was standing in front of it, the horse did not react and continued to stare at the two purple eyes that were looking down at it. The speed at which the lightning horse was losing its life force was slowly increasing. At this rate, it would have definitely lost its life within one or two hours. But Volak was not going to wait for one or two hours. While the lightning horse was still looking at the purple eyes in a daze, Volak lifted his sharp claw. Just as he lifted his sharp claw, ghastly black energy appeared around it. Volak touched the lightning horse around its chest, and his claw went inside its body. Soon Volak's claw was completely inside Lightning Horse's chest, and he grabbed its heart. He looked at the Lightning Horse one last time and clenched his claw. Poochie Dash. The heart of Lightning Horse was destroyed, and all of its life force instantly disappeared. Even after its heart was destroyed, Lightning Horse's expression did not change, and it collapsed to the ground, while still staring at the two cold purple eyes. After the lightning horse collapsed, the two eyes that were in the dark world slowly closed, and Volak and Horse returned amid the burning buildings of Naphlium City. Chapter 547 Thump When Evan heard the sound of lightning horse falling down to the ground through shadow senses, his mind went blank for a moment. Although he watched everything from the beginning, he was still stunned after seeing how easily Volak killed lightning horse. Evan didn't know but World of Darkness, the skill that Volak had used was actually a skill that originated after the fusion of two unique skills. The Shade Stalker had a unique skill called Skill Mark, and Volak had a unique skill called Darkness Zone. When Evan merged their soul using Soul Fusion, both of their unique skills fused together, and this new skill was born. Skill Mark was a skill that could randomly seal any two skills of your opponent, 
when you used it on them. On the other hand, Darkness Zone was a spiritual skill that could directly steal opponents' life force by affecting their souls. But after both of the skills merged together, the effect of Skill Mark and Darkness Zone increased greatly. Now using World of Darkness, Volak could seal all the skills and mana of his opponent for 10 seconds. And during those 10 seconds, his opponent will be under his control. If anyone wants to break free from the World of Darkness, they must have spiritual power greater than Volak. But because of the fusion of two souls, Volak's current spiritual power was very high. When Evan looked at the details of the World of Darkness skill, through the second effect of the Growth Link skill, he was completely speechless. The effects of this skill were simply overpowered. There is a 10 hour of cooled down time for this skill. Huh? Evan muttered after seeing the cooled down time for the skill. But considering this skill could turn even an S ranker into a normal person. By sealing their skills and mana, 10 hours was a very short cool down time. A shadow undead created by the fusion of two souls is really overpowered. Evan shook his head and looked at Eclipse and others. Oli was using her curse skills on the monsters. So the weak monster army became even more weak. Hana was controlling hundreds of monsters at the same time. And was wreaking havoc in the middle of the monster army. Astronox and Necros were simply crushing the opponent with their brute strength, and Snow directly froze the hearts and brains of the monsters, killing them instantly. The low-level monsters that were in his army were also doing a great job and were attacking in groups, killing as many monsters as possible. When Joseph, Peter and other hunters saw what was happening, all of them were terrified. Instead of a fight, it was just a one-sided slaughter. The monster army was completely helpless against the shadow undeads and all of them were being slaughtered like lambs. Evan looked at the fight for a moment before looking at Joseph and others. He wanted to know about the current situation of the city, and these hunters could give him more information than Kazal. He tapped Ariel's head lightly and ordered it to go down. When Joseph and others saw Ariel coming down, they were ready to fight thinking, now that the lightning horse and its monster army were dead, the army of black monsters wanted to kill them. But when they noticed Evan who was sitting at the back of Ariel, all of them couldn't help but take a step back. Evan was using energy devouring on a monster's body. So all of them could see how the body of the monster was turning into a dry husk at a speed visible to the naked eye. Looking at Evan, all of them thought that instead of a human, he was a monster who was going to eat them. When Evan noticed their fearful expressions, his mouth couldn't help but twitch. Seeing how they were looking at the body of the monster that he was absorbing. He knew what they were thinking, but he couldn't stop absorbing the energy. Because if he stopped, he would definitely feel the sharp pain once again. I should leave from here after asking about the situation of the city. Evan thought inwardly and stopped a few meters above Joseph and others. Do you know where is old F-A-R asterisk C-O-U-G-H asterisk I mean? Where is Nathan? Joseph and others who were prepared to fight a demonic battle against Evan were stunned when they heard him. It took Evan two and a half minutes to explain to them that he was not their enemy, and was not here to eat them. Only after knowing that he would not turn them into dry husks, did they all heave a sigh of relief. You are looking for Nathan, Peter asked after Evan explained everything to them. Yes, Evan nodded his head while taking out another monster's body to absorb. Peter gulped down his saliva when he saw Evan turning another dead body into a dry husk, and quickly told him everything that he knew. Evan raised an eyebrow when he heard Nathan was seriously injured. But he was not worried about him. I'm sure that old man has many life-saving tricks. So he won't die so easily he thought, and asked about the location of the camp where Nathan was. Peter told him about the location of Nathan's camp, and Evan estimated that it would take him a few hours to reach three. By the time he was done with Joseph and Peter, his shadow undeads also finished all the monsters. During the fight, he lost 2,000 shadow undeads whom he created earlier, and now there were 8,000 undeads in his army. He thanked Peter for the information, and ordered Ariel to fly towards Eclipse and others. Joseph and the other hunters watched Evan flying away, but soon they were shocked once again. After arriving above Eclipse and others, Evan used Shadow Resurrection once again, and turned the army of Lightning Horse into shadow undeads. Now, there were around 18,000 Shadow Undorders in his army. Soon, Volak brought the body of the Lightning Horse, and gave it to Evan. The body of Lightning Horse was in perfect condition, so he easily turned it into a Shadow Undead, and got another S-Ranker. After turning all the monsters into Shadow Undeads, 
he put away their bodies into his shadow storage, and ordered his army to move forward once again. Chapter 548 How is this possible? Are you sure you are not mistaken? Damien asked the sonic bat in a voice full of disbelief. I am sure, the voice mark that I left on it just disappeared, the sonic bat said in a shrill voice. Nathan is seriously injured, and Ron doesn't have the ability to kill the lightning horse. Do you think it is the work of the S-Ranker who fought against Golden Lion? Damien said after a moment of silence. I think so. There is no other S-Ranker in the city other than him who can kill lightning horse. Damien thought seriously and after considering everything, a cold expression appeared on his face. Gather all the monsters who are scattered all over the city. It will slow down our speed of conquery underscore. It doesn't matter Damien cut off Sonic Bat before it could finish what it wanted to say. We need to take care of that guy before doing anything else. Sonic Bat didn't say anything else after hearing Damien's serious voice and opened its large mouth. Sound waves came out from its mouth and spread all over the city. All the monsters that were wrecking Hovak all over the city suddenly stopped when they came into contact with sound waves and started to move towards Damien and the Sonic Bat. Done Sonic Bat said after calling back all the monsters. Damien nodded his head with a serious expression and asked another question. Where is Golden Lion? It was injured after fighting against that hidden S ranker. So it went to the other end of the city to kill the hunters who are hiding there, and vent out its anger. Call it back immediately. It's too dangerous for it to be alone before we take care of that hidden S ranker. Damien said and started to organize all the monsters that were present there. Don't worry. I already sent it news about the death of Lightning Horse. It should be back soon. Roar. A 5 meters tall A rank Earth Bear roared out in a terrified voice and turned around to run away. But before it could run away, a giant palm that was tens of meters big came down from the sky and pressed the Earth Bear into the ground. Boom. Crunch. The surrounding area shook and all the bones in the bear's body turned into dust because of the terrifying power of the giant palm. Or necros. I still have to turn them into shadow undeads. So kill them gently. When Evan saw how Necros turned the earth bear into meat paste he shouted at him. Ah, uh, Necros scratched the back of his head when he heard Evan and stopped using size manipulation skill. After a few minutes, the battlefield turned silent, and all the monsters were killed. Evan looked down at the battlefield, and his eyes flashed with dark light as he activated the shadow resurrection skill. Just as he activated the skill, thousands of new shadow undeads appeared on the ground. It had been 5 hours since he entered Nafliam City, and currently, there were around 33,000 shadow undeads in his group. The other 6 groups that he formed after entering the city also contained 5,000 shadow undead each. The commanders of those groups would send the bodies of monsters to him every hour, and he would turn them into shadow undeads, so that the group would not collapse. I am at 20% now. Evan looked at the rank of his monarch core, and said in a delightful voice, he was absorbing the dead bodies of the monsters since yesterday, and now his monarch core was 20% filled. Although he had to absorb thousands of bodies in order to reach 20%, he was not bothered by it, because he still had many cores and bodies remaining. At this rate, I will successfully increase the rank of my monarch core to S, Evan said to himself, and put away all the bodies that his shadow undeads killed just now. The number of monsters that are flooding the city is much greater than I initially thought. At my current pace of clearing the city, it will still take me a few hours to reach the camp where Nathan is Evan sighed out loud, and ordered his shadow undeads to move forward. While moving forward, Evan looked at the condition of his soul, and noticed it was not healing properly. Should I use monsters' bodies to heal my soul, instead of increasing the rank of my core? Evan frowned when he saw his soul was not healing properly. But he soon shook his head and decided to heal his soul, after taking care of monsters in the city. The rank of most of the monsters who were inside the city was very low, so if he wanted to heal his soul using them, he would have to absorb tens of thousands of bodies, and it was not meaningful. Once he turns Amara into a shadow undead, he will directly ask her to make a potion for him that can heal his soul. Using a potion will save him many bodies that he can use to increase his rank. As he was moving forward Evan once again felt the auras of many monsters. Surprisingly, the monster who was leading this group was an S-rank monster, and was heading toward the center of the city. 
Another land to slaughter. Evan muttered with a smirk on his face, and tapped Ariel's head to fly faster. While Ariel was flying toward the monsters, Evan used Hawk's eyes to look at them. Using Hawk's eyes, he was soon able to see the group of monsters that was moving toward the center of the city. This group is bigger than any other monster group that I have seen so far after entering the city. Evan muttered after seeing the large number of monsters that were in the group. After confirming their numbers, Evan searched for the S-rank monster that was leading them, and the moment he saw the S-rank monster that was leading them, his expression changed. In the lead of the army, there was a 20 meter tall golden lion. As Evan looked at the golden lion, his eyes slowly started to turn cold, and a frosty aura started to come out from his body. Your title The Cursed One is reacting. Chapter 549 When Evan saw the golden lion, he felt his emotions growing cold. Your title The Cursed One is reacting. A notification flashed before Evan's eyes and a sudden desire to kill the golden lion began to grow in his heart. This growing coldness dot this feeling is similar to the feeling I felt when I killed Olivia, Evan muttered to himself, and he sounded colder than useful. He once again felt a strange energy coming from the depths of his soul, affecting his emotions. Although he did not like the fact that his emotions were being affected, this time Evan did not try to stop the energy that was affecting his emotions. He knew that even with the shadow energy he wouldn't be able to stop this energy, and would just damage his soul even further. Soon the urge to kill the golden lion increased to the point that Evan started to release a terrifying killing intent. He even stopped using energy devouring and started to ignore the pain in his soul that started to increase. All of his shadow undeads also felt the change in their master's emotions and thought the monster army in front of them did something to offend him. Snow, Astronox, Aqua, Volak and all of his other shadow undeads also started to release their killing intent and soon a hostile aura filled the surroundings. Golden Lion, who was leading the monster army back after receiving Sonic Bat's message, suddenly looked in the direction where Evan was coming from, and narrowed its eyes. It could feel that something terrifying was coming in its direction, and its instincts were screaming it to run away. Soon amid the destroyed buildings and burning houses, the Golden Lion saw an army of black monsters coming towards it. Their burning purple eyes were filled with killing intent, and they were bringing the aura of death with themselves. Looking at Volak, Necros and other shadow undeads who were in the lead of the army, the blood of Golden Lion instantly turned cold. Just by looking at them, it could feel that they were not easy opponents. But what frightened the Golden Lion most was the a plus rank bird that was rapidly coming in its direction. Looking at the person that was standing at the top of the bird, Golden Lion felt all hairs on its body stand up to no end. In just a few seconds, the a plus rank bird arrived above its head, and the Golden Lion felt like it was being watched by a predator. This time Evan was not planning to fight because of his injured soul, and was thinking about leaving the matter of Naphlium City to his shadow undeads. But now, for some reason, his heart was filled with killing intent towards the Golden Lion, and he wanted to give it a painful death, similar to Olivia. When Ariel arrived above Golden Lion, Evan didn't even think for a moment before he took a step forward and dived down towards it. While diving down, he used shadow senses and sent a message to all of his shadow undeads. Leave the Golden Lion to me and take care of the other monsters. The Golden Lion was really scared of Evan when it felt the cold aura he was releasing. On top of that, it was still injured after fighting against Kazal and was not fully recovered. Although it was scared, the Golden Lion knew that agility was not its fault. Even if it tries to run away, Ariel will easily be able to catch it. So instead of running away and giving Evan a chance to attack it from the back, the Golden Lion decided to fight head on and run away after injuring Evan to some extent, so that he would not chase after it. When Golden Lion saw Evan diving towards it, it was stunned for a moment, but soon a smirk appeared on its face. The two things that the Golden Lion was most proud of were its defense and strength. And seeing Evan was directly coming towards it, it was filled with confidence. It's my chance thinking Evan was underestimating it. The Golden Lion decided to use its full power from the start and injure Evan, so that it could get a chance to run away from there. Boom. A powerful aura burst forth from its body, and the Lion used its unique skill King's Might. King's Might, Unique Skill, when used, increases the user's strength, agility and defense by 200%. After activating the skill, the user will release the aura of a king, 
And if the will of your opponents is not strong enough, their power will decrease by 30% after being affected by King's Might. The effect of skill will last for 20 seconds. Cooldown time. 6 hours. Evan felt the power of Golden Lion suddenly increase greatly and a powerful force trying to affect his will. Evan did not bother with the force that was trying to affect his will and completely ignored it. While diving down, he activated Sonic Resonance and Mana Reinforcement. The moment he used his skills, a tearing pain came from the depths of his skill. Evan furrowed his eyebrows when he felt the pain, but he did not back away. In less than a second, he was just a few meters above the lion. Roar! The golden lion roared out loudly and used one of its claws to attack Evan. Evan also clenched his fist and punched without holding back. The moment the giant claw of the lion came into contact with Evan's small fist. Bujom. A terrifying explosion occurred and powerful shockwaves swept in all directions. The buildings and houses in the area immediately collapsed, and most of the shadow undeads and monsters who were below sea rank turned into blood mist when they came into contact with shockwaves. The ground beneath the golden lion cracked open, and its eyes contracted to the size of needles when it felt the power coming from Evan's small fist. The golden lion thought that it would easily be able to injure Evan with its superior strength. But even under the effect of King's might, it was not able to overpower Evan. A surprise glint also shone in Evan's cold eyes when the Golden Lion was able to handle his punch, and they were equally matched. But this equal confrontation did not last long because the next second, power aura, bang, crunch, Evan's aura suddenly increased and the Golden Lion was sent flying backwards with its claw broken. The moment Evan used power aura, the pain that was coming from his soul increased once again, and his soul was further damaged. Although the pain was unbearable, for some reason Evan's mind was crystal clear. While the golden lion was still in mid-air after being sent flying away, Evan took a step forward. He sensed the wind that was flowing around him and suddenly entered a trance-like state for a split second. With his crystal clear mind, Evan was easily able to sense the wind element in the surroundings. Suddenly, the wind element started to move towards him. The surprise thing was that he did not use his wind manipulation skill to move the wind. The moment the wind element moved towards him, he disappeared from the place he was hovering. Just as Evan disappeared, a notification flashed before his eyes. You have learned a new skill wind walk. Chapter 550. You have learned a new skill wind walk. Evan ignored the notification that flashed before his eyes and suddenly appeared above the golden lion who was still in midair. The wind was circling around him and it looked like his flesh body turned into the wind element itself. After appearing above the golden lion, he clenched his fist. Sonic vibrations filled the surroundings and he smashed his fist on the spine of golden lion using mana reinforcement and power aura. Crack. Boojum. The spine of Golden Lion snapped the moment Evan's fist connected with its back, and it crashed to the ground with an earth-shattering impact. Rubbles and debris flew everywhere, and shockwaves swept the surroundings. The ground sank inwardly, and a pit that was over 200 meters in diameter formed as the Golden Lion in its center. Many monsters and shadow undeads who were of lower rank were caught inside the shockwaves, and their bodies burst into a puff of darkness and blood mist. Evan hovered above the giant pit with a cold expression on his face. The pain that was coming from his soul was simply terrifying, but because of the cold feeling that was still affecting his emotions, he didn't care about it. Asterisk cough, asterisk cough. After crashing to the ground, the golden lion continued to cough out blood, with its internal organs mixed in it, and its life force became incredibly weak. Because of its broken spine, the golden lion couldn't even move its body properly. The Golden Lion was now completely helpless, and if Evan wanted, he could have easily killed it without any problems. But the more Evan looked at the Golden Lion, the more he wanted to torture it before ending its life. Because of using so many powerful skills at the same time, the burden on his soul was increasing, and the damage to his soul already exceeded 8%, reaching 9%. In a normal situation, Evan would have long started cursing because of the pain that was coming from his soul. But in his current condition, other than giving Golden Lion a brutal death, he was not thinking about anything else. You dot y o you will regret asterisk cough asterisk cough. The Golden Lion wanted to say something, but before it could finish speaking, its injuries reacted, and it once again started to cough out blood. 
Evan came down from the sky and landed in front of the golden lion. Noticing Evan's cold and indifferent eyes, the golden lion lifted its giant paw and smashed it towards him. But Evan simply lifted one of his hands, and easily caught the giant paw of golden lion, without even using any of his skills. Crunch. Roar. The sound of bone crunching rang out, followed by a painful roar as Evan turned all the bones in Golden Lion's paw into powder. Tears rolled down from Golden Lion's eyes because of pain, and it looked at Evan with eyes full of hatred. Seeing how the Golden Lion was looking at him, Evan used wind manipulation and created two spinning wind spears. Go, he said in a cold voice and shot the spears into the eyes of Golden Lion. Bang, bang, roar. With two small bangs, both eyes of the golden lion exploded and red blood gushed out uncontrollably. All the monsters within tens of kilometers of the area that heard the painful roar of golden lion shuddered and looked in its direction with fearful expressions on their faces. 200 kilometers away from the location of golden lion, the sonic bat was rapidly flying in its direction. Damien had a skill called intuition, and it was telling him that something bad was about to happen which is why he sent Sonic Bat to bring back Golden Lion as soon as possible. As it was flying towards the Golden Lion's direction, the Sonic Bat heard the terrified and painful roar of the Golden Lion. Although it was 200 kilometers away, it was able to hear the roar because of its skill. Something is not right, the Sonic Bat said in a low voice and increased its flying speed. After hearing the painful roar of the Golden Lion, while flying, it used one of its skills or a concealment to hide its presence. Using its high agility, the Sonic Bat was soon able to see the Golden Lion just after one minute. But when it saw the Golden Lion and its condition, the small eyes of Sonic Bat trembled, and it stopped flying forward. This underscore the Sonic Bat looked at the small human who was standing in front of Golden Lion, and its instincts started to scream. Without even thinking about even for a second, the Sonic Bat took a solid U-turn and fled from there. Evan glanced in the direction of Sonic Bat with cold eyes, and sent a message to one of his shadow undeads. After sending the message, he threw away the stone spike mace that he was holding, and looked at the Golden Lion, which was now looking like a blood lion. Using the stone spike mace created by Stone Buffalo, Evan peeled off the entire golden skin of the lion. Its mouth was pierced by the stone spears, and a large puddle of blood was forming beneath it. He looked inside his shadow storage and took out a red-colored powder. The powder was called Flame Sand, and he found it inside Amara's ring. It was a common alchemy material. After taking out the powder, he sprinkled it on Golden Lion's body. He already peeled off its skin. So when the flame sand came into contact with its flesh, the entire body of the golden lion trembled. Its effect was similar to rubbing salt on someone's wounds. But because of flame sand, the effect was hundreds of times more painful. The golden lion wanted to scream in pain, but its mouth was filled with stone spears. So even this simple thing was impossible. Its eyes already exploded so it could not even cry. Soon his shadow undeads killed all the monsters that Golden Lion was leading. When Evan noticed all the monsters were dead, he pulled out one of the stone spears from Golden Lion's mouth and pierced its heart using it. The Golden Lion's body twitched for a moment when Evan pierced its heart, and in just a few seconds, its life force completely disappeared. The moment its life force disappeared, Evan's emotions started to return to normal. And the moment his emotions started to return to normal, the pain that was coming from his soul finally affected him. This is the end of this video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed and wish you wonderful rest of the day. The silent rupt is out.